YouTube P51D, 1.5 meters of pure bliss. Retractable tail wheel, that's right guys. You may have seen it before, but you haven't seen it with me. And that's what we're about to do. It's kind of slipped out of my hand there and it made me scared. So we're gonna try to fly. We've had crap weather, we're gonna do it right now. All right guys, take off flap style then. Everything's being tested real quick. We're gonna taxi this to show you how nice it, it handles on the ground. She'll turn real sharp, which is nice. This is a fairly big plane. It's very powerful. Of course, we're running this on the smart 5,000 milliamp hour. I'm just gonna be on the safe side. Throttle cuts on, timer's cleared. We're gonna go all the way back just to make sure we don't have any problems. Full disclosure, this is the third time I've flown it. Not the third takeoff and landing, but the third time we've flown this. It's the calmest. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited because it was so crazy windy and if you want to see that just stick around We're gonna do this and we'll do the unbox and build then you can watch the other two videos guys. We don't hide anything We just show it later. Okay, you want to step back two steps good mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so excited for this That thing is so powerful. Wow. Look at the gear door. Oh, it's so Take off flaps here, but it just got on slow. That's so stinking gorgeous, guys. Into the power, you see that P factor? Unlimited vertical, folks. You stay right there, I'll work around you. Wow. Full landing flaps here, we're gonna come in for a very slow pass. Clean. Oh, that thing is so gorgeous. Look at this thing. Look at that. I could reach out and touch it, but I'm not gonna. Into the power. Oh, yeah, baby. I feel like maybe there's just a touch of trim. Okay, one click of flaps there. We've got our takeoff flap. Oh, man, that thing feels rock solid on that high setting of Expo. Oh, so gorgeous. I just gave it three clicks of trim. I haven't been able to trim this beautiful bird. Oh man, that is so gorgeous. When you get a bigger plane like this, folks, sometimes you gotta, sometimes you gotta be a little bit careful on size because when you get up into your vampire killing zone. Are you kidding me? That's my whole four minutes? Seriously? No. Way. No. That is not. Nope. It's not. Okay, a little bit more trim. Man, it's flying so good, Megan. Yeah. Camera crew, sorry. We'll speed pass if we can do it safely. come around here a landing flap let's slow it down going downhill for a dirty pass gear coming out now oh gorgeously slow operation you're going back up out of the flaps into the power a little bit of rudder to tempt that nose over coming right over the tree line for an attack <laughs> sorry not an a10 sorry folks sorry <laughs> folks that was my mistake we're going to the super high speed pass setting. Oh yeah, baby. Look at that rock solid performance. 100% throttle still. Out of the throttle altogether. We're just gonna bring it down with gravity only. Look how slow it's going. Full speed, full speed ahead, here we go. Man, something is wiggling on there and I don't know what it is. Man, that thing is spongy right now on my top setting for Expo. Guys, after my second series of flights, you will see what I did. I set up three Expo and dual rate settings. This is on the high speed setting, okay? Here we go. Over the inside. Guys, I trust this plane with my house. 50% throttle, takeoff flaps. Coming around, going to my middle setting so I can control it a little better. I wanna see if I can shoot a final. Fun one step forward. Be aware, you're coming down. Gear take a while on this plane, guys. Right 
up over, but not into the trees. Out of the flaps, out of the gear. Okay, I think we're gonna land this on the road, hon. Okay. Well, we could probably land it here, but I just I gotta stick it. I gotta stick it, guys. You think I can stick it, hon? Yeah. I've got four kids. <laughs> oh, that thing is so gorgeous. Man, those lights are, oh, did you feel the wind from it? Oh, that was awesome, that high-speed pass. Guys, I'm gonna fly this thing till the battery dies. This is not good. Yeah. Okay, here we go, here we go. Scare the crap out of that bird. Oh, yes, guys. Oh, I want so badly to keep flying it. You gotta be getting close to your four now. I gotta right? be, I gotta be, I gotta be. All right, let's go on a, let's go on a trip. Let's save power. Let's go. Where? Let's just, let's just make this plane live to see another day. Takeoff flaps about 5% throttle, get the gear coming down. We're just gonna go into a nice holding pattern here, guys. I think we're good on power for a while, guys. Oh yeah, look at that beautiful thing. I'm gonna go out there and come back to us, hon. Okay, where do you want me? Just come down to the end. Okay. Okay, chopping the throttle. Check for traffic, we're clear. Clear for landing, full landing flaps coming down out of the takeoff flaps. We're just gonna do this nice and easy, guys. Nice and easy. Go around. Leaving the gear down for extra drag. I don't want to go too fast. There go the gear. I accidentally pulled them up, guys. Sorry. Gear coming down. Takeoff flaps in. Landing flaps going in. Ditch. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Woo! Wasn't okay. a water landing. Guys, this is our water hole. <laughs> this is where we breed mosquitoes <laughs> for your viewing pleasure. Hon? Yeah. Camera crew. Throttle cuts on and passage. Got it. Thank you. Um Guys, the one thing I can tell you about this beautiful bird is she loves the ditch. I think she just wants to live in a van down by the river. And I'll tell you what, guys, it's not hard to land, but I am making it hard to land because the crown on this road. Let's check the telemetry. 23.1. Mm. Oh man, it's tempting. Let's switch Don't, packs. Okay. Let's switch packs. Pause it. Okay. Yeah. You hear that plane? I do. Where is it? Oh, it's up there. Okay. Oh, yeah. We're good. All right, guys. Just wanted to show you what's going on with this. I'm going to spin this off, Simona. <laughs> yeah, we're good. We're good. We're going to turn it off. <laughs> that is hard to hold back, folks. Do you want to powerful check the battery yeah let's check the while battery. we're on let's still check the battery guys this plane oh no we did get mud on the side of the wing dang it that's all right Oop. nothing a little spick and span won't take off all right we have just enough room to get to it with the handy dandy xbc 100 smart checker this thing is awesome guys if you don't ever buy a plane from one of the links on my channel go get one of these things they are awesome and I'm a big believer in get it cheap and get it often, but this thing is a buy it. It's a little bit more expensive and you got it for one time and you're done. 44%? Yep, we're going up. We're going up. It's 3.8. Oh, jeez. We're going up. We're just going up. It's no biggie. <sighs> it's all right. What's the worst that could happen? I'm just going on record as... The camera crew is always right, so camera crew, change your mind so that I don't get proven <laughs> wrong. We're just gonna go up for one circuit, guys, because we're losing light and I wanna fly this thing. <gasps> so beautiful. I wanna fly this thing so bad. 
I've only had like three opportunities and this is the best one. Stay where you are. He's a little squirrely on takeoff, guys. Oh, but that is so freaking gorgeous. Oh man, those inner gear door are gorgeous. Let's try, just do this. Let's see if we got power. Ooh, she's sagging a little bit. Here come the gear. Awesome guys. Man, that silhouette looks good. Just gonna go up here. We're gonna try to take a landing approach this time. You're coming down. I'm actually gonna trade sides with you. Okay, full landing flaps coming down now. Relaxing into the final, using a little bit of rudder to get that nose over. spots. Let's go all the way to the edge in your little corner, please. You're coming up. On, you good there? Mm -hmm. Stay there. I know where you are. I won't hit you. Oh. <laughs> okay guys, we have a, a gear door that broke. So you remember the instruction manual? Oh. There was an a, there was an addendum in the instruction. Oh man. This thing loves to run fast on the ground. Holy goodness. I mean granted, I don't know that that's uncommon among the P51s in the room, but I can tell you this. It lands good and it sits down, squats. It's beautiful. These things, they send you a spare pair claiming that they have some inherent weakness. I don't even know. Oh, look what happened. That thing broke there, which by the way, they sent that to, right? Did they? No, this... no, no, it's just the door. No, it's just the door. Just the door broke. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out if I can flip it around. I think I can just flip it around, guys. That might just go back in squaw back in yeah yeah if i if i didn't have a spare pair i could fix it with a single toothpick and a ca by the way that wasn't the plane's fault that was my fault because i was uh dragging tail into the ditch guys we're watching the gear that was awesome the one thing i can say is she gets squirrely with that tail wheel down just like a real one okay oh if i cycle the gear that thing might get stuck yeah it Hold might. that there let's see if i can get it stuck in there Man, these landing gear are a thing of beauty. They are so good and springy, but these landing gear are so hard that really some pneumatic wheels would help a lot. You could run that PSI down low and they would be grabby almost. The other thing is, I'm just wondering if I could make some more resistance because look, they use those C clips to, man, that is, gr there's bearings on here, guys. Look at that. There's bearings. Who puts bearings on a 1.5 meter airplane? Horizon Hobby, evidently. All right, I'm, I'm afraid of breaking it, so I gotta take this thing off. Guys, we're gonna show you this. Right now, it's happening, okay? It's hard to get that thing off. Look what's happening, guys. I know I'm out of hands to help you. Okay, pause it and we'll fix this. Okay, guys, we're gonna taxi back up the house. Mostly because I don't want to carry it. And then you can watch this gorgeous thing taxiing. Now, stay tuned for the video. We're basically going to clip from this flight straight into the, uh, the unbox. And I can tell you something, guys. This plane is a thing of beauty. But, man, it likes to roll. And it's not like a fighter, like a more modern 
what am I thinking of? Like the A10 where you can just flare the crap out of it and then you've got a nose gear on there. I had some guys tell me you could put some rubber. Uh, you could put some rubber. Of course, you could try to land on grass, but our grass is very rocky. Show the people at home, in fact. Some people have been <laughs> commenting about our grass. This grass. It looks good. It's looking good, but I mean, look at this, guys. There's just rocks yeah. all over the place. And I mean, I'm not saying that you couldn't land on something like that, but I just... Not yet over not here, Not yet. It's got to be more lush. It's got to be a better stand of grass. And then this side hasn't even come in because it was like the last that we did. Yep. We just did this little border. And man, this runway is going to be so nice. Look how great it looks with the grass. We've been fighting hard to get all this stuff done for our runway, just for yours truly. But the problem is, you know, Mother Nature has to play a big part in that. And this week, Mother Nature has been paying dividends for that. This grass is going to be coming in. And then pretty soon, we're going to be doing some, some other projects. You guys have maybe seen this equipment up here. We're gonna cover that, it's gonna be exciting. But for the moment, you just get stuck with these beautiful airplanes. Which by the way, oh my goodness, we have a lot to do for you guys right now. Yeah. <laughs> that thing is so gorgeous. That is really cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna just do a quick circuit and then we're gonna go fix that that landing gear door quick. Is it dragging? No, I think it's just it's like rubbing. chattering. It's rubbing as it bumps yeah, along. Oh yeah. It's kind of like in place, but it just drops straight down. You hear it? Yeah. Guys, this thing would for sure. Oh, we could taxi it in the sod. You want to taxi? Let's taxi it in the sod. For the oh, people. okay. Okay, careful because it, you know, the ground handling is pretty good at low speed, but you get into the higher speeds and like it gets squirrely as heck. Yeah. I've always had, that's always been true of every P51 I've ever had. Just full disclosure, this one is not any different. The only difference is it's more beautiful and it's bigger than what I'm used to. I mean, I know that there's bigger ones, obviously, folks. Ooh, I do not want to go off into that muddy mess. Nope. Oh, that thing is so gorgeous. Guys, look at that. Those shock-loaded, oh man, those shock-loaded oils. Oh man, those things are so gorgeous. I'm actually driving in the grass to clean off the wheels. I don't want to blow up the prop just to get over this bump. Yes, I could have carried a little bit more speed, but I just want to play it safe here, folks. It's a new plane and it's beautiful and I really, really like it. This is the type of plane that you'll taxi around and you'll fly it. And once the nerves wear off, you are just gonna do some crazy things with it and it's gonna do it flawlessly. But when any plane is new, man, I don't know if you're like me, but the maiden flight's about the worst flight I could put online. Of course, that's always the one everybody wants to see because then it's like the no BS flight. Man, that looks good. You know what else I need to do? What? I need to mix in just a little bit of rudder to uh, aileron mix. Oh. Or an aileron of rudder mix. Okay, let's taxi up to the front door. And then we're gonna go ahead and fix this uh, landing gear door. Real quick, we'll show you what comes in the kit. All right, that's up next, guys. Coming right now. All right, guys, so we got it inside. We just wiped off uh, the tip. Looks like I just lost one little fleck of paint there, which is unfortunate. Right here, show them underneath. Right there. Right there. Yeah, so basically that's the worst. Um, nothing else got damaged except for that gear door. And like I said, I kind of skidded it in at the end there. So we're gonna do this with the battery plugged in and the throttle cut on and tested, okay? So if you're not comfortable with that, take your prop off. There is a certain safety factor to that. Um, I'm gonna pull the canopy off because it's a little easier to put it upside down with the canopy off. And you're a little bit less resistant. These side bolts are extremely strong on this plane. And the antenna maybe too, just to be on the safe side. Okay, prop and forward. Hang it over the edge, just like I did on the edge of a table or an island or whatever it is you guys have to work with. If you can, you can wrap this. Now, of course, you get a model holder too, which I just don't have one, so. The reason I did this live is because you may need to actuate the landing gear. So, I wanna do that. The other thing is, you'll notice that I cleaned. Look how freely those spin. Okay, guys, in the hobby world, oh, look at this. We got grass, we got grass seed. See that? Oh, yeah. I really, really wanna actuate these gear for these people. Here, catch it. I'm gonna put it in your hand. Oh, it's going to be hard to do that. Okay. You get it? Yeah. That's not a little bit, but 
So now we can go ahead and take this stuff off. This is the little upgrade kit I was talking about. This will come with your plane when you buy it from the link below. Don't forget to watch the rest of the hour and a half of video. <laughs> As usual, I've included uh, all sorts of footage that you probably didn't expect. And uh, our maiden was horrible because it was extremely windy. It had nothing to do with mm -hmm. the plane, it had everything to do with the wind. I flew without the drop tanks today. I think it flies beautifully. Oh, that's upside down. Upside down. So these, these, these are the instructions it comes with. Nothing, nothing really fancy, but just, you know, Horizon always takes black for, you know, whatever this or that. Well, I'll tell you what, it's like the only product lineup I've found that comes with replacement parts before you break them. Um, okay, that's awesome. Okay, so you see how that goes, folks? So I just happened to get lucky. I just grabbed the right side. This one's the other side. Um, so I think all we have to do is just pop off three screws. So we got this screw here, which will release. You want to show them what I'm doing here, or can they see from mm -hmm. that angle? Right here. Okay, so there's Loctite, first of all, on this screw. You're going to block access to my tools there in just a second. Okay, so I've got that out with the Loctite. Okay, so we're just going to drop that down. It looks like mine is in good shape, so I probably could have done that without. And what I lost was right here, folks, this little tip. Mm. This seems fine, but this is supposed to be way more strong. So, yeah, it doesn't look like I have to replace the bottom part. So I think what I'm gonna do is, like I said, until such a time as I need to replace both, I'm just gonna bend this to pop it out. Oh, it's just super flexible. Super flexo. See, there we go, got that out. Okay. So we'll keep this and then I'll label that as broken with a sticky note or something. Okay, so I think I wanna go there last. I wanna go here first. I have to kind of bring that in a little bit to find the hole. Where is the hole? Oh, yeah, that is where the hole is. Okay, there is a, a bump in the molding. Hmm, that might be a little harder. Okay, so we're gonna retract the gear. Oh, so cool. oh that is so gorgeous. Look how long it takes those things to get in there. Now, the mark of not completely failed landings is the fact that your gear go back in the holes. If they don't land, if they hit the pockets and bind, that means you probably hit the ground a little bit too hard. I'm not saying my landings were stellar, but I'll tell you what, I'm pretty proud of what I've gotten on those two landings. So you'll notice that I can't quite get that in there. So it looks like the easiest way, I'm gonna use a Chinese screwdriver because they seem to work good on this sort of thing. Yep, a little better purchase. The Craftsman screwdriver, um, which I believe they're Mexican now. Oh, really? they're, yeah, they're made oh. in Mexico. They used to be made in America, but now they're made in Mexico. Hmm. So, there's your screws that goes into the front of that. I'm just gonna lay that down on the side. That gives me access to lift this, see? Oh, yeah. And then I can, I can kind of flex it all. You see how I'm flexing it, pulling it forward just a hair to gain access. Whoops. Oh yeah, there it is. There it is, it's in the hole. It's in the hole. Camera crew, look at that beautiful, beautiful, beautiful scene. That's amazing it's it's a thing of beauty okay <laughs> all right i'm happy for you so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to plop this back in here so it's memorial day weekend we started this we started this film last weekend it was a crazy weekend this plane went together super fantastic very uneventful super fast super fast the weather was garbage oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the camera crew just doesn't get how awesome that is. I, she should hey, get it. <clears throat> she should. She should. The camera crew. Hey. Okay. Hmm? I was going to say, don't forget to put the that's linkage what, back in. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. Except, yeah, I got that. So that goes upright, okay? You were ooing and eye. It's I going upright. Don't worry. I never forget to stick it in the hole. And it's important. That's true. Okay, here we go. So I got the Loctite on there. The Loctite's dried, folks, so I'm not putting any more on there, okay? But then you're gonna lose your landing gear door. Well, if I do lose my landing door, door, that would be kind of unfortunate, but I'm pretty sure I'm resourceful enough I can figure that out. I'll find it. Also, on my initial oh. maiden, I scraped just a little bit on one of the landings, if I recall, mm -hmm, I so. but otherwise, the finish on this thing is pristine and gorgeous. And if you can't already tell from the landing, 
I mean, just a little bit of bounce is to be expected on hard surface. If you're landing on grass, you're gonna be able to get around that and it's gonna be gorgeous. Stay tuned, the build is coming. But before you see the build, I just want you to see how gorgeous this thing is again. Oh, it is so gorgeous. And it is big. And the blue looks a lot better in person mm -hmm. than it does in the book. I'm gonna just check the CG as we flew it. And we're gonna show people where the battery was, okay? I'm on the back marking. And now I'm on the front marking. Ooh. Now I'm in the middle, now I'm on the back. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys where that ended up because you'll be amazed. And this is with a 5,000 milliamp hour 6S. Is this is a 30C or? This is a 30C. Um, yeah, I think that one's a 30. Let's show the people at home. Whew. Let's unplug it. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. There it is. All right, no BS here, guys. Look how far forward it is. Yeah, for reals. For reals. Look at that. Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. Look at this. And it could still probably go it could. further. It could. It could. But I do not like putting dead weight in my planes. Now, I know some of you guys are going to say, but you can use less dead weight and get it further forward and then make that fulcrum work for you. That's true. But I, I just can't bring myself to put dead weight in a plane. I'm going to stick a bigger battery in there if I have to. So, 5,000 milliamp hour, 30C, 6S, smart pack. Let's stick it in the charger and see what it says. Another gorgeous charger here, guys. This thing has proven to be awesome. I see the kids were doing some craft work and leaving flammables right next to the charger. That's always fun. What? Yeah. Just. Oh, by the way, on this one, it says minus. So you want to line up the, the one that's farthest from the positive. Okay, farthest from the positive, if that makes any sense. Spectrum, if you're listening. Black, it's a cool thing, but just please, just go back to one black and then everything else colored, okay? Because it's confusing. All right. Let's see what we got. Whoops. Okay, we're going to charge it 8 amps. I'm going to set that back to 5. That's how I have it defaulted, but I wanted to get the extra 5% on that pack. Okay, there we go. And you don't have to do that, guys. I just changed it for the last one, so it saved the setting. So we're at 38%, guys. We could have flown that thing. So we had a four-minute timer, a four-minute timer on this big, beautiful bird, and we probably could have gone, I would say conservatively, we could have gone six to seven minutes, no problem. Um, I'm not being extra conservative with the flights either. I'm on the throttle hard, and when I go up, I'm going up 100% throttle. So, you know, limited vertical is definitely a trade-off for power, and you will burn through batteries quicker. And those high-speed passes are glorious. Well, look, look at this, that's cool. Look at that. <laughs> that guy is like, get me the freak off of here. Look at this. <laughs> he picked the wrong thing to Yeah, okay, so guys. Way. Stay tuned, right now, the unbox build, and at the end, we're gonna do two more flights for you, just so you can laugh at my malfeasance. Thanks for watching, guys. Come back for more, and there is a lot coming. YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. We promised you some exciting things, and this is so exciting that the box won't even fit in the field of view. So, camera crew, without further ado, I'm not even gonna show you what it is until I open it. It's going to be amazing. This is going to be a top secret opening. You may have noticed what it is from the title, but I'm just going to pretend like you didn't know. You may also notice from the fact that we probably put the flight first. So at this point, it is fully not secretive, but we're going to pretend that it's secret. Okay, never mind. Forget the secret, guys. I can't wait any longer. I got to put it down. It's going to be so cool. Oh, yes. It will be mine after many, many moons of saying it won't be. <laughs> Do you guys remember when I was like, oh, I'm not going to buy that. I already have the 1.2. Well, you know, I mean, I'm not wrong that often. Just ask my camera crew. <laughs> sure. That makes you feel better. Okay. So when you open this box, it's not a 
uh, what's oh, made me nervous? I thought it was one of those lid boxes. Oh. And it's not. Because <laughs> I'm like, when you pull it out, it would just plop right out. The P51 Mustang 1.5 with smart technology, guys. This will be the first ESC that's actually smart. All the rest of mine are idiots. Oh, wow. That box is humongo. It is, yeah. Oh, wow. Guys, well, I'm no good. I'm no good. I'm so useless. Not only is it smart, it has LEDs and flaps. So forget. I'm done. <laughs> Maybe we'll open this one just so I can fly it. But then I'm done. It's a washing machine. First, the birds were throwing things and they scared me. Now the washing machine is going off and it scares me. It's kind of skittish. Somebody has to do something productive in this house eh. besides play with toys. Listen, this is not a toy. Just ask the Federal Aviation Administration. You need a pilot's license for this. Hobby grade oh. aircraft. Uh -uh. Is that better? No way. <laughs> this is the deadly killing machine. <laughs> oh my goodness. This thing's a bit tight. This is going to be a good plan, guys. Oh! The wing is so big that it doesn't even come in one section. Look at that. That's awesome. Oh my goodness. That's good, actually. You know why that's good? <gasps> the wing tips have servo plugs in the plastic, molded. That is awesome. Okay, this box is so ridiculous. I mean, you don't have an Here, do you need small help? kitchen. We're going to have to get a bigger house. Okay. It's done. We've only been here one year, but we're going to have to get a bigger house now. Because it's plain. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, now that we've got it open, oh, this looks so good, guys. Look at that. So pretty. Mmm, smells like fresh paint. Nice. Nice, ready. Ooh. Can't manage it, man. Okay, it's coming out at a weird angle. Oh, what's this? There's a letter in it. Look at this. What does that say? What does it say? It says something Here. about these are stronger, made from different materials. They included gear door. That's kind of weird. I don't know. They must not. Oh, because look. Look, there's lightning gear door already installed. I was going to say. Yeah, it says, please install this new set. These are stronger. I can't read it all. Made from different materials. So, I guess, guys. It's an addendum to your flight gear. It's an addendum with gear. addendum parts in it. That's amazing. Let me see. That. If see the installed it. strut door does not, door pins, there is more instructions in there. Oh, okay. We'll have to open well, up and we read it. We will read through the instructions on this. Um, it doesn't look like it's going to be anything too fantastic because there's just two screws that hold it in and then some... Looks like really easy to install springs. <laughs> so we're gonna get back to that. Oh yes. Wow. Whoa. Show them the panel lines at home, honey. Wow. Whoa, look at that digital servo. You can't even see it because it's covered up. Oh yes. Ball joints. Oh yeah. Wow, the panel lines are good. That looks so good. Wowzers. Whoa, I, I might like need a the, minute with this. I like the blue more in person. I know, I did too. The color. Those, see they still have those little mold dimples. Yeah. So that doesn't you bother me. Get away from that. Wow. Looks good. I'm trying to see if we can see through the paint. Nope, it's okay. That's actually not a bad thing in my book. You can't see the carbon fiber rods that are installed. By the way, this is carbon fiber. It's carbon fibery. Those birds are interrupting our video again. Okay, so the only manufacturer in the hobby world that puts a piece of foam to protect the foam is Horizon Hobby. Although, check this out. Look at this. The foam evidently protected it a little bit too much. Got a little <laughs> overzealous and squished it a little bit. That's kind of disappointing. But, you know, what are you going to do? I would still say that they do an awesome job on most of the stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, look. They have a cover for a breakout on the servo wire. That's cool. I'm trying to figure out why that is. <gasps> oh, you know what that is? I bet that's a landing light. No, it might just be a junction area. But that's so cool, it's molded right in. Okay, all right, we're gonna pick up the wing now. Ooh, how do you pick it up? There's a finger, finger hole here. Sorry guys, I normally tip these boxes up. Oh, wow, that's tight in there. Oh, it don't, don't feel good. Hold. I'm moving the servos. I know, don't do that. Uh, okay, how about we try this? 
Wowzers. You have to take that top foam piece out over there first. No, it's not a top piece. Oh. That's just like really weird to me. Hey, the box, there's a line. Like, do you need to cut the box in half? And it oh, comes out wow. the bottom. You know what? Camera crew, you're you welcome. Might be totally right. I missed the seam. It's actually two pieces. See, this is why you watch unboxings. It's not just to watch people stumble over themselves and say stupid things. But that's just secondary. It just comes with the territory. Oh, yeah. Whoa, that is so beautiful. I don't even care about the wing anymore. We can check it from the other side now. Nope, it doesn't come no, out the bottom. No, it's totally closed in. Wow. We tip it out now, maybe. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Oh, yeah. I'm going to this for a minute. Oh, gorgeous. Yeah, that blue is that way is better. really pretty. Person. Way better in person. There's a ball joint here. That is really nice, guys. Really nice. Look how pretty that is. Hey, really metal cool. rod connecting those two. Actually, if this feels so light, I don't know. Maybe it isn't metal. Uh, bolt together construction. Look, one, two, three. Countersunk screw holes. So you're going to have those goofy little screws, but the screws are going to be received into plastic, which is key. You're going to have something to crush down and spread out the load. Drop tanks. Oh, wow. They're so detailed. Look at this. Oh, you got the breather valves and all that good stuff. I don't even know what that is. That is really cool. How do they it's attach? listed as right. Uh, they've got a... It's like a clip. It's no, like a God. slide. You put it in and slide it back, probably. I don't know. I only, I only dropped one of them on top of a <laughs> government just... building once. <laughs> Ironically enough, they gave it back to me. <laughs> <laughs> when I accidentally dropped some... Something else. They were drop tanks. But we, we call them bombs, except for there. We didn't want to call them bombs. Uh, the spinner... Okay, so you go through all this detail, right? And then you have a spinner that is beautifully finished and detailed, but the plastic just doesn't quite have that same echelon of finish. But I mean, it's still a very good match in colors. So we'll just set that aside. I'm not too put off by that. Man, this looks good. The fuse is so beautiful. Oh, does this have a retract on the tail wheel? Looks like it. Oh boy, it might. Man, this thing is in here tighter than like any other plane I've gotten from Horizon. Wow, that pilot is detailed. Oh wow, what's he doing there? That's well, he's alone. Him. Not made for children, evidently. What do we have here? What do we have here? Look at this. What's that ESC? Is there a ferrite core on this? Are you seriously? Come on now. Do we really need a ferrite core on there? Honey, would you please explain to them that we don't need a ferrite core on there? I don't know what it is, so you totally don't need Oh one. yeah, baby, look at that. That is a retractamundo. Retractamundo! And then look, oh yes! That is awesome when the gear goes down. Oh, steerable, retractable tail wheel. This is why you go to 1.5 meters, guys. I didn't even think about that, and now I'm glad I'm seeing it. Look at this, guys, so beautiful. That's a Spectrum motor, SPMXAM1000. So it's a 4258, 460 KV. Which is weird, I didn't think Spectrum was making motors, but I guess they are. They're just motor boating around all day. <laughs> all right, look at this. Oh, big old release. Man, that canopy is detailed, gorgeously detailed. Oh, wow. That is gorgeously detailed. Look at the canopy instruments. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. That is really cool. And, of course, they're vented so they don't get all foggy. Another ferrite core? Are you kidding me? Do we really need a ferrite core? Seriously? A ferrite core is a magnetic thing that wraps around wires, and it um, helps to reduce the RF radio frequency interference oh. oh look at that don't chop your fingers off mm, good. guys good seriously tip. it's actually that'd be a bad tip <laughs> oh that was like a bad so joke. anyway so this is an ar 637 ta tna wow Ooh. Oh, well, so i'm gonna try to put this antenna back because like i don't really like that being there 
I'm looking. There's nothing back there. Because this so. antenna comes up, and it makes makes like a bend like like this. Because it, it should go up straight, but it kind of runs into here where the canopy assembly slides down in there, which is a really good fit. This gives really good structural integrity to the sides of the plane. Normally, these sides are not very strong, but good lord, you feel that. Yeah, that is like a Squish lot more it. than normal. That's like way strong. Yeah. What the heck is going on in there? Oh, what's going on in there is carbon fiber rods right there, guys. Yeah, let's hope I don't get to show you that in more detail later after the maiden. I don't know why I would. This thing is going to fly like a daydream. And yes, this is one of the reasons why you get Horizon. Oh, but Brian, it's just a foamy. You know what? You don't get that in your balsa wood plane unless you put it in. And if you put it in, you spend a lot of time and effort on it. And kudos to you. Now that being said, that's one of the that's one of the things you get with a Horizon plane. You get stuff like this. This holds the battery, and then you lay the battery down, and it goes into this tray. Now, anybody who has had a Horizon plane before has just come to expect this sort of feature on some of the higher dollar things. And then look, high quality straps. I was just complaining about that on the Carbon Z Cub. Almost mm -hmm. as expensive. What is that one, like $450? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. This one's like 500 bucks and it is gorgeous. A buy and fly, buy and fly. Which by the way, if you guys are buying these planes, why are you buying the plug and fly? That's crazy. Uh, if you fly from Tahoe, I suppose you could do that. But I just feel like the buy and fly is so much better value because you get an expensive receiver and it's done, which is nice. Wow, that is so gorgeous. So gorgeous. We love. It's not just panel lines, guys. We got pedo tubes. Pedo tubes, almost enough to make that cry. All right, we're gonna go ahead and, uh, oh wow. Look, do not fold, post office. <laughs> what does this say? For instruction manual updates, I have to visit the website for an instruction manual update? What do they think this is, 2020? Why don't they just send the updates through the smart ESC? <laughs> okay, whoa. Look at all the screws and antennas. Oh my goodness. That is awesome. That is quite the nutsack they got there. And inside the spinner, we're looking at four individual blades. I don't know if I like that or not yet. I'm actually a little bit concerned about that because when I buy something that's got four blades, I kind of like it to just be done. All of a sudden, this thing becomes crucial. But I can live with that, that's no big deal. It is kind of a bigger plane. So you're gonna eventually get out of a one piece design. Last time I had one like this was a long, long, long time ago on a Sea Fury. It was an mm -hmm. Obvio Sea Fury, it's a Hobby King product. And I had five blades and I heard horror stories from guys that were having the blades shoot out. Like, whoosh. I don't think this is gonna happen. It's not even an issue. And you know what? I never did either and I crashed that thing many times. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that plane, by the way, was way too advanced for me when I got it. Yes. Um, wow. Man, the packages are a thing of beauty from Horizon. Man, you guys spend a lot of time on this packaging and you do a good job. Um, I wish the other ones would listen to you. All right, so let's see if we can get this wing out without damaging it. I'm just like really dumbfounded that it's so difficult. Show the people at home like how tight this is. See this guys, look, it's touching. Oh. See that? Yeah. I mean, I could break it. It's probably not a big deal. Can you pick from there and there? Oh, there we go. I'm just, look what I'm doing guys. I'm just pulling this out. That's, that's actually like heavy because we got two retracts. Oh yeah, I love it. No step lines, that is so cool. Oh wow, look at that. Those gear door servos? What? Oh, that is so gorgeous. And they're big servos, jeez. What are those digital servos? I can't tell. I don't want to say, but they look expensive. So I'm glad I didn't have to pay for them individually. I got them at a package price. Feel how heavy this is. That's kind of crazy. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy because it's like all the retracts and everything. Mm -hmm. I, I want to see the retracts so bad, but I can't open them. Okay, guys, we're going to have to pause and reset because like I said, our house isn't big enough for all this packaging at once. All right, guys. 
So now that we got this stuff all unboxed and we've got the beautiful box, it's a beautiful backdrop. Uh, we are going to assemble this thing so we've collected the necessary tools for that. In this case, I'm going to be a smart feller and I'm gonna use a smart tester, smart checker thing that's also known as an XBC100. And we're gonna use that to test the servos before we glue any wings on. Not that we would ever make a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so we're gonna do that. And uh, we hope you'll come along for the ride because this thing is gorgeous. And it's gonna be an easy build. All right guys, even on the ground this thing wants to fly. Look at it, it's like a butterfly. <laughs> we're using the servo tester. And I've, I've never gotten into using servo testers, but I just, I couldn't resist mostly because look how awesome that is. That is so cool. I can't wait to try this all. Okay, so basically, let's show them at home what we're doing here. I just got myself a Y cable because you, you need to have a little something to plug in here. And so this V2, I guess is the one that opens the doors. I just got lucky. I didn't know which one was gonna be which. So when they get open, then I'm just gonna unplug it. Okay, so that's all the way opened. So now, let's hope I get the right one. I'm gonna wait till it's at the zero position. You guys see what I'm doing here on the screen, how it's like going back and forth. Okay, so now watch what I'm gonna do. So the only problem is since it's oscillating, I'm gonna stop it. Okay, see what I'm doing guys? See this, look. I'm gonna put it all the way up, plug it in, and then the retracts are gonna to respond to a certain part of the wavelength and the pulse width modulation. So that's closing them. Now I'm gonna open them. Oh, that is so cool. Okay, so now I'm just gonna unplug that servo because you don't have to have that plugged in. Oh, that's so cool. Look at that. Now you don't even have to be patient anymore. Oh, we didn't even do the right thing yet. Let's close the gear door. We can't be leaving things open like a bunch of rip rats. <laughs> but then I gotta make sure I do it right so I don't screw it all up. So this is where you gotta be a little bit careful, guys. So that was the, the first one I did was labeled as V2. So I started with V2, I don't know what that means. And then I went to the one to the right. So if you wanna show the people at home, it might be a little bit more sensical for you at home. See, this is V2. That was the door, the doors. And then this was the gear, okay? Okay, so now I'm just gonna walk them closed. Whoops. Oh, that's so cool. I have it set to 20 microseconds, okay? 20 microseconds meaning uh, the steps are 20 microseconds per, and you can have it as low as one. So you can go like one microsecond all the way out to, what is this, uh, 10,060 microseconds. Ooh, it'll take forever. Oh, man, that is gorgeous. Look at that. Oh, that is going to be awesome, guys. I can't wait to see it fly. And then look, the Oreo. Oh, that is so gorgeous. Do you want to touch Those it? Those look like nice landing gear. I'm good, thanks. Come on, just a little bit. <laughs> See? Oh wow, that one's stiffer. Woo! That is so good. Look at the detail. I know, they look really nice. They got they got uh, spring clips on there instead of screws. That is gorgeous. And then look at this. See, there's one screw here. They've even got an adjustment for the closure. That adjustment will get this door tighter when it closes. Awesome. Awesome, attention to detail, I didn't even open up a second piece. All right, we gotta test the flaps. Cause now that I got this tester, I'm just gonna test everything. Jeez. I won't, I won't do that. Mm. I won't do that, I promise. So I put a Y splitter on here for a reason, folks. Now my, my ground, see the brown? Brown's gonna go to, uh, let's keep this the same direction for the, for the filming process. The V2's up on the top left. So this is the doors, then this is the gear, and then these must be the flaps. So I just gotta make sure my body's out of the way and I don't damage anything. So it looks like the rounded is how you can tell where things go. So they're a little bit rounded on this spot. So that means I'm just looking at the shape of my, my Y connector to help guide me. Oh yeah. 
Oh, oh, so those must be the ailerons. That's just a bird, don't worry. Okay, so, oh, that is awesome. Oh, yeah, look at the shape, look at that, look at that. Oh, that is so gorgeous, they molded in the shape. That is just wonderful, loving it. And then look at, is that hinge an integral foam hinge? That can't be. All this attention to detail and then a foam hinge, no way. It's possible it is though. No, it's a glued on assembly. Oh, the flaps are a glued on assembly guys. That's pretty cool. That's how they got this attention to detail. Okay, so now I'm gonna come out of the sweep. I'm just gonna press the button. Oh man, that's good flap deflection. Then I'm gonna put it back to home position. Now I'm gonna unplug it and I'm gonna plug it into the ailerons, even though the ailerons aren't hooked up. We'll go ahead and we'll know which one's which. In fact, now that we've done that, we can label this. So if you're really, really geeky like me and you watch this type of video, then you're probably gonna label it too because it's nice to know what's going on. I'm gonna opt for an ultra fine Sharpie, which should give me a, a, good, a good thing to mark with because this is a plastic surface, it should mark easy. So this is the doors, door, doors. This is the gear. And then this one's the flaps. And this one's the ailerons. And that's also going to be the takeoff for the power on the LEDs. Okay, so here we'll just, let's do this. Nice. Okay, cool. So now what we're going to do is we're going to just ram these right in the hole. Oh man, look at that guys. I'm not even going to look at the instructions. This thing is so easy. Look at those clips. That is awesome. See the clips? That's like... They're replaceable. Wow. Guys, if you break your clips, you can actually fix the freaking thing. Somebody was thinking on this. There's no screws though, which means they're probably going to be uh, rather challenging to undo is my guess. Whoa, look at that. What was that? Probably carbon fiber. <laughs> Come take a whip of it. Okay, so you see this, guys? I'm kind of nervous to do this because... Oh, yes! <laughs> All right, let's lay this down. Oh, got to be careful about do that. Do you want the blanket? I will, actually, but... Yeah, let's just put the blanket out. Guys, this is not the way the directions call for, but I'm just I'm just doing it the right way now. I'm just gonna forget the manual until I'm ready for it in five minutes. And once you chop a hole in your wife's blanket, you should use the same one so that you That's right. Don't ruin multiple ones. Yeah, I already chopped a hole just in, in case. this one. And it was a P fifty one by the way. It was the blondie. One it was? two meter. Yep. Oh, that is so gorgeous. Oh buddy! That is gorgeous. 1.5 meters, so I'm six foot seven. <laughs> if I'm getting life insurance, I'm six foot one. Okay, so let's put this down and let's test the ailerons too, because I'm just testing away, because this, this is really nice. I'm checking it. Not testing, checking. All right, it is a little bit hard to tell which direction to line up. Okay. Lights. So I'm gonna go to sweep. Oh, that is so cool. Look at that. I'm gonna shut down the side. It's so gorgeous. Oh, that is cool. All right, I'm gonna also plug in the flaps at the same time. Just because these are the sort of things that nerds do. <laughs> yes. Yes! That is so cool. Looks like some sort of a freak show robotic dance. That is really cool, guys. I'm having visions of putting the servo tester on this and then hanging it on the wall in the living room. Sorry, Just Sarah, I shut keep, down. Nobody keep thinking that. that. That is so cool. Okay, so now I have to unplug the flaps because they're parked. Get the ailerons to the neutral position. And that's what people mean when they say center your servos for assembly. One of the reasons I like working with Horizon products is because you don't pretty much have to do that. All right, the wing is built. 
That is awesome. I think, should I retract the landing gear? Um, I don't know. Or can we just set it up and then put the I'm just afraid of when I put it on. in this, the, the oh. machine that otherwise it's not going to be. Put it back to the way so it was. I'm going to open the doors just to be on the safe side, guys. Yeah. I actually don't know if I need to. It's probably going to tell us like shortly that we have to do this. Okay, so that's all the way open. Blanket. Yeah, buddy. Okay, so that one decided it wasn't gonna go for some reason. What did I do? What did I do? Did I kill it? Oh, you know what? Just a second and figure out what I did wrong. This happens. So I figured out what I was doing wrong. I have to sweep through the range instead of skipping. Listen. There they go. So there is a certain there is a certain moment. Okay, so this is zero microseconds, and then this is 1060 microseconds, and this is uh, whatever the opposite is. This is zero. This must be the middle. Actually, I'm curious. I'm gonna unplug it and I'll show you what I'm talking about. See this here? We're at the max and the min, okay? So you can just click it and it'll go. So you see how it's 1,060 microseconds, then it's 1,520 microseconds, then it's 1,980 microseconds, okay? See how that changes? So in terms of pulse width modulation, uh, there's, there's a square wave that goes up and then it comes back down, okay? So the voltage is measured up and then down, and it actually goes at a slight angle, but that's fine. We'll just pretend it's straight up and straight down. And the differential between the amount of on time and off time, and on time and off time, and that's pulse width modulation. You're measuring the pulse and then the width, if you were to put it on an oscilloscope. So what's actually happening here is there is a range where this activates. And if you take a servo tester and you skip from like here to there drastically, you actually bypass the range. So that's what was going on there. I think that's a little bit weird. I figured that these would be more sophisticated than to have that type of problem, but they're not broken. That's important for you to know. So that being learned, and now we all know it, if we have problems with these retracts, then I'm gonna put a small delay on the servo speed. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow from minus 100 is probably where they're gonna be stowed to zero to plus 100 is where they're de deployed or vice versa. And what's gonna happen is I'm gonna make that, instead of going fast, I'll make it go 0.1 second. So it'll be like 0.1 second. Instead of being slow, you don't want it slow. If it's slow, it'll just take too long for these to actually actuate. And by the way, the speed is gorgeous. So you've probably already figured out by now why we put the flight first, because I have the, uh, long-winded gift of gab here. You do? Now, now that you know that stuff, which some of you guys already know that stuff, I have no idea what you do know. There's hummingbirds out there, that's so cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and park these uh, gear door. And so that's why I labeled them because you don't wanna crash your landing gear into the doors, okay? Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that. Okay, cool. And the other day when I reviewed this, we took off the protective cover and then we like Windexed the heck out of it and it was kind of acting kind of funny. It's fine now. It just needed to dry out. My bad. All right, so this flap, I must have bumped into it with my belly. So it's back into the normal position. That wing is gorgeous. Look how smooth that is. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I such a dork we married. Okay, all right. So now the next step is we need to uh, figure out what we're going to put together next. And for that, we should probably be smart colors and read the manual. So without further ado, I am going to take a moment and so that you don't have to, I'm going to have my wife read it to me. <laughs> Did you pause it yet? No. All right. So this is the instructions that came with these extra gear door. Uh, it sounds to me like what's going to happen is if if 
this thing breaks, is that what you gather too from that? Mm -hmm, I think so. So if that breaks, they've provided extras. I don't know that they're saying that it's gonna break for sure, but evidently they had some problems with that in production. And so they just were proactive and they sent out these extra springs, um, adjustments, so whatever. In, in my case, I'm gonna put these away and not mess with it unless I have a problem. So, yeah. I okay. agree. Yeah. But better than trying to fix gear door. So after opening the props, oh wow, they're gorgeous. Look at the complex shape. That is really cool. See this here? That is really neat. And then look at that pitch. Oh man, that is so aggressive at the inside. And then it tapers off at the end. It's just gorgeous. But anyway, I just I we were playing with the nut sack, trying to get everything out, and we noticed that there was one short screw in this bag. And then there were seven long. And then over here, these are almost certainly for the prop. For yes, the prop. They are. For the spinner and the prop. So we might have one spare screw. Yeah, it's possible. We'll now, our instruction manual showed a couple of different things. First of all, uh, if you want to film uh, from this side so that it looks right for the people, you can see this is this is the screen where you know we basically want to show you in case you don't have the manual. That's important stuff. We're gonna to try to set that stuff up here shortly. This is the second other important stuff right here. So this is the X18, so I'm in this section here. It's like if you're using a different transmitter then you would use whatever you got there, okay? You'll notice that they did not have the DXE in here. The DXE doesn't have enough channels to run everything on this plane, okay? So just be aware. There are limitations, you can do the 6E, um, but they don't have the DXE, so just be aware of that. I mean, I don't even think the DXE is like a five-channel transmitter. But either way, I don't have one. So if you ask me, just know I'm not going to know, okay, because I don't have one. This antenna is the only one that you're, you're actually going to have to install, and you can just pressure fit it. My experience has been with those antennas, especially on the P51, when you're transporting this plane, it likes to kind of get caught on stuff. Mm -hmm. So you may actually just, as that wears and tears and gets a little harder, um, to keep, you know, like in the right position, just take a clear piece of tape and wrap it around there so it makes it a little thicker. And then just over time, you might have to do that once or twice. But don't glue it. If you glue it, then you're stuck with it. Also, we did not have to glue the the air scoop here, mm -hmm. which is listed in the manual, and we did not have to we did not have to glue the, the altimeter tube. center. Yeah, over there. It was so, in the manual, but we didn't. It was already done. Yeah. I think that's a keto tube. What do they call it? Altimeter sensor. Okay, the altimeter sensor. We did not have to. So, that being said, if you look at these uh, diagrams, as with always, they have very good instructions. So, you're supposed to put in that first. So, we're going to do that right now. Obviously, the, we, we try to do this so that people that need help building these planes can get some help. Uh, this is this probably not going to be a first plane for most people. Um, just because it's, you know, more expensive. But it's, it would not be a horrible second or third plane um, if you're confident in what you're doing with the planes you do have. Meaning, if you're flying safe, this, by the way, this is keyed. See that little block? Mm -hmm. There's a key to receive that right there. So you can't put this in backward, which is really cool. That should also help with some play that could otherwise be experienced if they didn't have that. See? It forces you to have it lined up at least somewhat, somewhat perfect. That is a really good fit. So I put this in, but I'm gonna actually take it back out right now um, for a variety of reasons. Now you notice I haven't tested anything else in terms of control surfaces at this point. That's kind of a calculated risk at, at this point, and, and here's why. Because in order to plug everything in inside, I would have to unplug it all from the receiver, which just doesn't make any sense. Now the wing is a little bit different story, and I just mostly wanted to see how awesome it was. So now that we have that stuck on there, we're gonna eventually have to put this thing on, which is the ball link, and we're gonna have to put in three of these. Now, there's a short one, and there's a bunch of long ones. My, my understanding on this model is that you're gonna have four long ones, because you're not gonna have one short one on the wing, but this short one might actually be for the back, because it's not reaching through as much wing. The directions say use three, three by 40 millimeter screws. The other thing that so could be know. used for is for the spinner. Sometimes the spinner calls for that oddball size. Mm. So I am going to, 
err on the side of listening to my wife because she's probably correct. And the reason I'm going to listen to her is because there's three and there's four. That makes seven. The, the instructions, did, they said to use the 40 millimeters. So I did not measure these. I'm assuming they're the correct size. But I, it's kind of like instructions. I, I don't measure stuff like that. I just pick them up until they work. I stick them in all the holes until they fit. There we go. Okay, so what did I use for that? That was a 564. I don't know if it's supposed to be metric, but I just used a 564. So. And that's a long ways in there. I hope I can reach with this on the next one. And then look where the last one is. Isn't that cool? Oh, it's in there? It's in there. Oh. Yeah. Huh. This whole retractable gear on the tail wheel is so cool. I've heard about it on 1500 millimeter and 1750 millimeter planes for a long time, but I've never had one that's big enough to need a retractable tail wheel. So I'm actually very excited about seeing this thing fly. You know, bigger planes generally fly better. It's not always true. Um, bigger planes are generally a little bit more capable. They certainly have more expensive batteries or they go up to a glow system or, you know, like a gas engine or a diesel engine depending on what you're using. But in my case, uh, I just haven't ever run into that before yet. So I'm excited to see how it's gonna work. This thing seems like it's spinning forever. That's not always, usually a good sign. That means I'm gonna miss the hole. Seriously. Nothing at all? Well, I mean, it feels somewhat resistive, but there's like 4,000 turns on this. So it's just hard to tell if I'm dropping the tool down. And look, by the way, see yeah. that? Yeah, they're <laughs> like. I'm like out of room, so. All right, we're gonna pause. I'm gonna get a correctly uh, length piece right now. So I got a longer tool, because sometimes if you're not long enough to reach where it counts, then you have to get a longer tool. So I got a two millimeter uh, Allen wrench here. So we're gonna stick it in there and just ram it. And I feel like we're getting, we're getting somewhere now, which is pretty good. So what did I say, 564 before? Yeah. So evidently two millimeters and 564s are pretty close because it didn't give me any props. Oh yeah, buddy, I can feel it's biting now. See, Ooh, size matters. <laughs> Dang it. Oh, it's lit. Okay, so I could have used the shorty for this one, but uh, this next hole, it's like you're reaching way through, guys. That's, uh, whoa, whoa, wow, look at that. Gosh, I hope I have enough length still. This is crazy. Look how far I'm reaching. Show the people from the side. Oh, that's not even the... Oh, jeez. That's like huge. I know. Ooh, that it's... one went way quicker. Huh? Yeesh. I guess... I guess... Uh, wait, 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 wait a second. Why? That is so weird. As I tightened it, the glue was being displaced around the head of the bolt. And it came off, so it like tried to pull. It did that on both of these. That is so weird. That's weird. That's totally weird because it did on both of these. So it's almost going to be like Loctite now. So that's good. And by the way, don't use Loctite on these models unless we're specifically instructed to do so. The reason I'm going to tell you that now is the same reason that you should be doing it. Um, the plastic does not like the solvents, and it can mm. sometimes cause them to crack. Okay, so when people are like, oh, you just put some Loctite on there. Well, don't do that. You're going to screw up your model. If you want to Loctite a bolt, just put a little bit of paint on it and it will dry and it will be just as good, if not better. And then you'll be able to still be able to get it out when you need to. You can also use CA if you really want it to stay. This one's not starting. What's wrong with me, hon? What did I do wrong? Is this thing going? Do I need the shorty? Remember that one you told me I didn't need? What? Look, it's like, it's, I feel like I've been threading this thing for three years. Look, I'm like halfway down. I'm still spinning like crazy. Oh, you're going to use the instructions. I you am. Know. Hold on. Go to the very front of the manual. Three, three by 40 millimeter screws. Now, hold on. You have to close the manual to my defense and then read what it says on the sticker. The sticker under the P51B Mustang. It says, always listen to your wife. What? She's always what right. Said. All right, so if your wife lets you build airplanes in your kitchen and stores them in half of your basement and, and helps you do your it, office, and then also films you fly them, and also your dining room table and, the dining room and your table. kitchen counter, 
in the kitchen counter. Do we need to keep going? Have I proved my point? You the runway with your hard-earned money. <laughs> yes. Then and only then you should definitely <laughs> always listen, listen to her because <laughs> she's probably right. Oh, uh, you know what? The bolt actually is going in. That just See? took forever. Well, it was threading through the plastic, and then it just took forever. Every single turn, I had to turn. All right, I finally got it tight. I think that's how it works with a screw. You have to turn the turns to get it in the hole. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. You need to behave, camera crew. Yeah. What are you going to do, fire me? No. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, somebody threw glue on the floor. That was, Who did that? That was you. So then we have to put you this missed. thing on. What hole did they say to stick it in? Uh, that's on the next page. Right. Turn. Hmm. Hmm. Ha! We broke protocol. <laughs> Shocking. Yeah, you gotta assemble that next. Okay, so the down there. The uh, this is the elevator, right? Yep, yep. Elevator. It goes to the what? How the heck am I supposed to get in the second hole? Why? She has squeal for sure. Look. Oh, How the geez. heck am I gonna get that in there? That's not the. That's not. That can't be right. That's crazy, Horizon. What are you? You killing me here, Horizon? How am I supposed to stick it in there? There is a ream hole on it. Look. Oh, yes! Got it. It went. Oh, that's hard to turn. Oh, wow. Hey, guys, it worked. See? Reading works. Despite... You're welcome. Wow, that is a strong servo. Jeez. I just pulled on it. It was like crazy strong. Now this servo is like way in a stupid spot, so I'm a little bit nervous about it. This is gonna to totally poke my finger. Every time I do this, it's like goes through and then it like jams into your thumb. You, you want to do? I'm it? sorry. Oh, you should show me. Oh, what? Oh man, those things are hard to get on there. I, I, no. I, hate, I cringe every time. Wow, look at that. I must have tightened that middle screw a little bit too much. Look. Mm -hmm. I crisped it up a little bit. Can you just push it on there? Yeah. It ain't on there. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it didn't poke me. That was awesome. So now, I don't know if that servo is centered. I hope it is, but if it's not, then I have to redo that process so I can do this. There is a Phillips screw, so you can undo the ball joint if you want. I'm not going to do that. That sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> All these good ideas. There's lots of people on YouTube. They like to share lots of good ideas for me. <laughs> Sorry. There is a correct way on this, by the way. See how it's pitched down at an angle? So like, it's high here and it's low here. Oh, mm -hmm. If you put it in the wrong way, it'll, it'll work, but it'll look stupid. So, be aware of that. Okay, so the antenna is supposed to be installed at this step. I'm just pointing that out to you. The wing, uh, yeah, supposed to already be in. So, you know what? I'm kind of deciding whether I want to put the wing on now or not. No, they said to put this in later, so I guess I'll wait and be a good boy. They said to do that later. I gotta put the wing on first. And no, I'm not taking the tips off. Because I don't have to do that. I'm very lucky that I don't have to do that. But if I had to transport this thing, that would be so nice. Because you get up to 1.5 meter, guys, it takes a lot more room in a car. Yeah. I mean, huge amounts more room. It it's does crazy. say... 1.2s are a perfect size if you gotta bring them in a car. It does say they just pull, the wingtips just pull out if you need to remove them. I don't know. What if you don't get it in time? Well, could be like to use a different could, kind could of protection, I guess. Long penalty for that. There it is. It's wow. Like, that was That's crazy. very scary to do and even more scary to listen to. Because I, I, I want it so badly to work. How do we have to watch you put your screws in your holes again? Well, there's four of them. It's going to take me like six and a half years, so no. <laughs> We're going to tighten these screws because, like, this is really boring to watch me spin my thumb. Literally, I'm literally twiddling my thumbs for YouTube. Yes. We're going to pop Okay, it. fine. YouTube, we got all four screws in. It was glorious. <laughs> okay, so these are right and left. Um, I'm going to put myself on the... Okay, so this would be the left. You just slip them down and then slide them back. And there's your drop tanks. Oh, huh. sweet. Just slide it back. Oh, come on. There it goes. 
Okay, cool. So that's actually kind of gorgeous and awesome looking. Oh, yes. And the tail wheel's still down too. If we tell that thing's flat. Man, that finish looks so much better than it does on the website. Mm -hmm. I like this, it a lot more. I don't like the swoops. It looks like waves. I'm sure some of you like it, but it's supposed to be like this camo thing. And I just, I don't like it. I want to take spray paint and cover it up. Make it straight. Otherwise, I love the, I love the colors. I wasn't crazy about the June night library, but I love my red. The blondie? Yeah, the blondie was awesome. And then I actually like the, I think they had a Texan too. Was it called a Texan, the yellow one? Oh, I don't remember. But they had a yellow one and it had a checker stripe finish on it. These, oh, um, yeah. These invasion stripes are really customary of war, warbirds of the era. And this plane is going to be easy to tell which side's up and down. I believe for practical reality, <laughs> the invasion stripes were actually supposed to confuse. But I don't know. I think they look sweet myself. I don't know if that's true either, so correct me if I'm wrong, guys. I'm sure you will anyway. Help me ask me. <laughs> uh, I can tell you also that this is gonna get dented up, so that paint is not gonna hold well. Just because the way that that canopy goes in. Looks like you do have to kind of push that back. Maybe that's just a new thing. After a few flights, it might get better. I'm really nervous about it falling over because it's so stinking beautiful. And I feel like this has been like one of the easiest assemblies we've done in a while. But we still have to build the prop. I'm going to be a good boy since this is actually a pretty big and powerful plane. I'm going to be a good boy and I'm going to assemble the prop, but we're not going to install the prop until we're done with setup just so I don't get myself cut. Um, I had somebody on my channel send me some pictures of getting cut by a prop on their quad the other oh. day. So thank you for that. That was fun. Nothing quite like those reminders. <laughs> but that's what I always say. There's two things that are going to hurt you in this hobby, and it's not running into yourself with an airplane, although you could do that. Most of the time, you just jump out of the way. Hurt property, hurt cars, houses, things like this. But most people get hurt by props and batteries. That's pretty much the two things that hurt people. And then if you get hurt by a plane that's flying, you did something really stupid. Okay, so look how we're doing this, guys. It's super duper easy. Got a nut that drops in there. It's an eye lock. Okay, so you don't have to worry about that falling off. Again, don't use Loctite, guys. Loctite does not go on bolts with nylocks because it eats the nylon. It weakens the, it weakens them on a molecular level and then they fail. I mean, there's still probably more pressure there. But if you wanna use something, something that's gonna be like Loctite, just use paint or something that's gonna jam up the threads. Okay, so it's pretty easy. The nylon goes out, okay? And that's so that the metal can thread through first and then cut into the plastic part, the nylon part. Does that make sense, Camera Crew? Did mm -hmm. I say that in an appropriate way? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay, so obviously you can't install these backward because if you do, it won't, it won't line up. So it's actually quite easy. You just literally put it together and it's done. Super duper easy. They slip in, just go right in perfectly. And with being only painted on one side, it's easy to tell, which is out. And I was complaining about that off camera because Horizon never paints the backside of their tips. And I understand that in real planes, they don't always paint the backside. Um, but I like it painted on the backside because then when you're as a, an RC pilot, you're working with your hands in relatively close proximity to the prop. I figure any chance you can to protect yourself from that spinning prop would be advisable. Granted, that would be a pretty big gaff if you put your hand into a spinning prop. Um, after it was spinning and moving around like that. So I know you said at the beginning that you weren't sure you liked having the four separate blades, but if you would break one, it would probably be more inexpensive to replace one than have to replace a four bladed prop. Maybe. Um, I agree with your theory. Uh, and that is a true thing because then you could take off, but chances are what's going to happen. If you have a, a prop strike on this plane, you're probably going to break the spinner. Mm. But the thing is, if you do, and Horizon, if you're listening, that would be kind of an important thing to keep in mind when people are falling, is that if you crack the spinner, you're screwed. You gotta get a spinner then. Which is not the end of the world, it's just another expense. So you gotta remember this is also not a first plane. And right. it's also a more expensive plane. So a plane like this is actually worthy of spending some money to fix once in a while. Um, you may have noticed from my previous five and a half years of filming, 
that I don't spend a lot of money on replacement parts, except for when I have to. I usually Frankenstein stuff pretty, pretty much exclusively on this channel, but this is the type of plane that's worth fixing. Carbon Z Cubs type of plane that's worth fixing. So you can see it's gone together really easy. Now, one thing that might happen is if you get one that's really screwed up, you can actually take off two of these blades and you can just keep the opposing blades on there and it should bounce out. And you'll be surprised how much power you still have. I mean, you have unlimited vertical with this. With four blades, there is a lot of drag. If you take two of them off, many times the plane will be more, more efficient. It's gonna be faster to get going. It's gonna, it's gonna actually be a faster plane. Um, but you're not gonna get quite as much power from each stroke. So, I'm trying to torque these down a lot, guys. I just don't want to have problems with them. I don't think I will. I haven't historically. I had one problem with one plane in recent history, and it was kind of a gap on my part. But Bryson helped me out. The spinner and the prop came off of the carbon Z cub one day. Oh, that's right. When your dad was here. Yeah. And then I just did stick landed it. It was actually a pretty sweet landing too. I was really proud of it. But then he watched the spinner come down. It just went like, Woo, just landed on the ground. We went out, got it, stuck it back on. Everything was good. But the cowling got uh, dinged up. And Ryzen sent me another one. That's stuff. right. They took care of me on it. So, this here. What's going to look like? Uh, it looks like yep. So that's the way that, that is gorgeous looking now. Mm -hmm. That's a big prop. That is a big prop. I don't know how big it actually is, but... Well, I think that... I think it said 15 and a half by 11 or something. I, don't so know, I read like it. like a spacer on the shaft. i got to figure out how this goes together. I am not going to actually fire it up. With everything taken apart. If you want to find that expand, explode view diagram, yep, just have that handy. Okay, so it looks like it slides all the way back, and then basically the washer and that goes in front. That's yep. the way it should be, by the way, guys. Yeah. I put together a lot of planes. In fact, I can think of one that's uh, one of those ultra micros that I did, and it had like two nuts and three bolts and like all this stuff. That was so complicated. Well, it was just goofy. I don't, I don't know. It was just a Chinese sometimes thing. They miss the mark, but they're trying to hit a pretty tight price point, I think, most of the time. Something's screaming. <laughs> I don't know what it could be. There's also a drive bit here on here. See that? So that's actually what's going to spin the spinner and then the prop. That's going to take the torque load and help keep that going forward. So when you torque this down, you're only keeping it in place as opposed to sometimes sandwiching like a collet that's going to bite mm -hmm. as it tightens up. Now, of course, you're going to be doing a certain level of that. But like we said, we promise to not do that um, until we get done with the assembly. It should be super easy to do. And this is, like I said, a big enough prop. I don't really want to be, um, you know, like one of those stories they tell kids about how not to chop their hands off <laughs> and lose their favorite hobby. All right, guys. So the next step is going to be, this thing is gorgeous. It's, it's basically built. And that was really quick. So yeah. I'm excited about it. I want to pause the video. We're going to get everything cleaned up and then we're going to jump straight into radio setup. So we got this prop and we were both right because that extra screw, the shorter one that's in the bag of seven screws is actually the shorter one is the one that's used to put this spinner on. And uh, obviously when you're all said and done, it's going to go right into this modified this little assembly okay so that's what's going to hold the spinner on so now that's metal on metal so if you wanted to use loctite you could um, but keep in mind that that literally just holds the cover on it doesn't hold the actual prop on okay the nut and the washer hold the critical parts on okay i still wouldn't want to lose that that'd be no good okay so we got that ready to rock um, obviously we've got the transmitter, we use the DX18 Gen 1. Um, someday I'm going to get a new one. Someday. Oh really? Someday. Hmm. IX20 maybe? IX12. Mm. So this is what we're using on it today. Um, this is going to be a 3200 for testing and then I have a 4000 now. I believe the range was 3300 through 7000, so 7000 is pretty huge. and um, I think I'm going to probably fly this on 5000. But I'm not 100% sure. 
Uh, right now I've got the 3200 and I have the 4000 ready to go. So that's what we're gonna use for today, potentially for the maiden if the weather cooperates. And it looks like it is gonna cooperate, but for now we're gonna use this for setup. IC5 connector, if you have an EC5 connection, you can use it in this plane, you'll be fine, okay? But she just won't get the smart capabilities passing through. So just be aware of that. Um, not all of them, you're still gonna get some smart capability through the radio system if you set it up. So, I take it back. Some of that stuff, the smart ESC and the smart receiver are two different things, okay? So, the reason I'm sitting down is because we have to mark the CG. We forgot to do that in the build part. So I got a pen, I got an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, and let's look at the uh, instruction manual. This is on page three if you're in the English, okay? If you're still watching this from another language and you don't speak English, I'm sorry. Center of gravity is 124, 124 to 137 millimeters, okay? So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna go to 124, or actually I'm gonna go to 137, 137. So it'd be 130, five, six, seven, okay? So there's our, there's our mark, so there's 137. Do you concur with that, mm -hmm. camera crew? So there's our 137, let's double check. There's 100, 30, five, six, seven, okay? So then we need to mark 124. Okay, so 124 is gonna be 120, five minus one is four, okay? So that's stupid, I just made a mark there and I really needed to do this. There's 124 and we'll come out here and mark. Remember, this is a range, guys. It's not exact, okay? And some people prefer planes to be a certain way and some people prefer them to be another certain way. But there is a certain amount of right and wrong when it comes to these center gravity markings. So now you're thinking to yourself, Ryan, what are you doing? Why are you cutting paper? What a waste of time. Why don't you just take the ruler and put it up on the wing? Uh, yeah, why don't you get back to me when you try that, okay? Because it doesn't work. Um, <laughs> now, when you're doing this, it's measured at the wing root, okay? So Horizon, we've had this conversation before. I'm sure you weren't listening. I was talking. Um, exactly where is the wing root on this plane? And we're gonna talk about this is not an uncommon problem. All models tend to have this problem, especially ones that are beautiful like this. Look at, the, look at this curve, guys. Where exactly is the wing root? Can you tell me? It's You know why that's a problem, Horizon, and everybody else who makes planes? It's because that is the entire CG range difference from there to there, okay? Yeah, that's true. So one could make the assumption that they need the edge of the actual wing, and that's what I'm going to do. Now, the risk with assuming that is that when you make your marks, you're going to make this plane inherently, you're gonna move the whole CG range forward, which means it's gonna to tend to be a tail heavy plane, okay? So error on the safe side for your first flight if you mark it this way, okay? I'm marking it this way because that's what I think is right. Um, so you see how you can fold that and you can really make your, your mark. Now, some would also argue that that's supposed to be a straight line, which makes, again, a big deviation. See the deviation from here to here? That would change where the markings are, okay? That's probably why they give you two points because some people are gonna screw it up, I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna go straight down and I'm gonna pull this to the spot where I can get the best marking. And since I, in my amazing planning skills, I only made my mark part way across and really I just need to kind of make it. You'll notice that I'm just doing a super precise measurement there. Okay. Camera crew. What? See this? See how I'm doing that? I'm just trying to get those lines parallel to the straight line on the wing, okay? So that way I know that it's square and I'm trying to make sure it's pulled tight, okay? So I'm gonna make one little depression and I'm gonna make one little depression. And that's all I'm gonna do for my CG marks, okay? See, not even really marked with a marker yet. Then I'm gonna come over to the other side and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Hopefully you guys can see what you need to see from this. Bearing in mind that there's not like a wrong way to do this unless you get bad results. And if you get bad results, do it another way. My results have always been generally all right for CG marking. So really simple um, way to do it. Now I can throw away that piece and get rid of the evidence. <laughs> so now I'm gonna actually go ahead and mark this. 
with my black marker. Just trying to make it look as neat as possible, but still be effective. How are you gonna do it through that? I don't know yet. I'm kind of trying to figure out if I can feel them. It's pretty hard to feel. I think we're gonna have to do glue draw, glue draws. So we'll be right back to do that. All right, guys. So I'm gonna try the hot glue method this time. Um, it's not always the best, but sometimes it's better on a bigger plane. Obviously it's heavier. I have had problems where the bead will want to pop off after a little bit. That's okay. It doesn't need to stay forever anyway. Once you kind of figure it out, it's not really that big a deal. Unless you fly with a bunch of different size packs. Okay. So I don't know how close you guys can see that as I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. But it's not very noticeable in person. No. And remember, you're just trying to kind of get, get it in the range, guys. Most of your experienced pilots are going to know what's going on by the way the plane is flying. Or by the way it looks like it's flying, too. Um, you can use CA for that too. CA, in my experience, bonds a little bit better. But this is nice because you can feel it better because it's bigger. So we're going to go with that. We're going to let that set up for just a little while. And uh, I was looking over the binding procedure because this receiver actually has a button. Can you guys hear that? Which, what's the button? The button oh. is the spectrum symbol. Okay. I see it. So I don't know if you guys were aware, but the binding plug is optional. Okay. You can remove the lead prior to binding. I don't really understand that. That's kind of weird. I was just reading the label in there. So basically we're on page 11 for binding is where you're going to look, but we're not quite ready for that. I was just reading that when I was waiting for the hot glue to get hot. So now we get to do the fun process of setting up the radio. So this is what we said we were going to be doing next. In fact, we were done with the prop, but we were wrong. So sorry for that. All right, so radio setup is going to be really super similar for most all of these aircrafts from Horizon Hobby that are bind and fly. And that's part of the reason why they're so nice. Look at that. Nine gram metal service and servos. Reverse over servos and regular servos that's awesome all right so here's the computerized transmitter setup this is the page that really really helps pay for that bind and fly premium okay so basically what you're looking at is you've got all these different radios are all set up the same way and then the seven and the eight are a little bit different okay so we're going to concentrate on the this because we have the dx18 okay so in this case we're going to turn on the radio system I have my throttle cut on. I have my safe, or in this case, the gear switch up. Uh, this is, this is normally that would be down for me and then this would be up in the retracted position. This would be down for landing. Flaps all the way down, ready for landing. Flaps all the way up. This would be where I would assign safe in the event that I don't have safe. Um, if, I, if I don't have retracts, then I would put safe here just so it's easy to get to, okay? So I'm going to go down to system setup. I'm going to go to model select. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom of the list and I'm going to click add new model. I'm going to create a new model. Okay. So now we can check the aircraft type. Excuse me. Model type. It's going to be an acro. That will be reset. Yes, it should already be reset. It's a brand new model. Then we can do model name. It's model 72. So we're going to pause it and I'm going to go ahead and type in the model name, which is P51D Mustang 1.5 meter. So we'll pause and do that right now. All right, so we're just getting the last couple of digits scrolled in here. If you're not familiar with scrolling them in, you just click and then you scroll and then you can press clear to switch between the different things that you're doing. When you're done, you just hit back. So now we've got that named. We're going to go to aircraft type and this is where you can go back into your setup cheat sheet which is, I think it's on page four. So this page three shows you some of the stuff too. And then this is page 
page four in the English. So you're going to be looking at uh, go to system setup and select model type airplane, aircraft type, one aileron, one flap for the wing type, one aileron, one flap. And then for the tail must be standard, which it makes sense because there's only an elevator and a rudder. And then the function list, we're going to do other stuff. So real quick, I'm going to switch my picture. They should have a P-51 in here. There it is. And we'll go back. We're not going to mess with anything else in there. The regular function list is when you click. There's the function list. And you want to go to set the flap system. So the first thing I'm going to do actually is I'm going to set the timer because the timer was actually called out on the page before and I don't want to forget. Yep. So I'm going to do a one out with a tone and vibrate. I'm going to uninhibit the one out and it's going to turn on anything over 25% and it's going to be set to four to six, I think four to six minutes. So we're going to go ahead and set it to four for now. It's a countdown timer. So it should start as soon as we do it. And the second thing I'm going to do right now is throttle cut which do they talk about throttle cut? They don't talk about it here, but do they talk about it somewhere else? I don't remember seeing it. Yeah, I didn't either. Throttle cut is not really listed there, but I don't care. I'm going to do it anyway. Throttle cut is inhibited by default. I'm going to scroll down, click, and then I'm going to use my H switch. And then I'm going to verify. I always set this to minus 100. Okay. So when my switch is on, Throttle's not moving in the monitor mode. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to monitor mode this way and verify. Off, on. So it's live now. As soon as I flip it, it shuts it off. Okay, see, off, safe, on, fly. Now, why do I pick this position, guys? I don't talk about this much, except for every video. It's because if I drop the ro remote and it hits, it's not gonna ever put it down like that. Mm -hmm. it, it would be like inconceivable for that switch to ever get accidentally put to the fly mode unless you whack it with your hand like I just did. So just be aware, it's not, a, it's not, it's not completely fail safe, it's not completely idiot proof, um, but it's still better than nothing. Okay, so then we need to set up uh, the flap system to switch D, Pfft, not doing that. I'm gonna switch it to B. So we'll go to flap system, scroll down. I got it set to switch B. All right, so, and you can do whatever switch you want. Some people use a pincer grip, which is really kind of, I'm not gonna talk too much more about that because I'm sure some of you do it, but I, I hold it like the right way like this, and then some people just kind of do the wrong way. That's all right, anyway. So there's that, and then this is gonna be for safe for me, okay? So as you can see, it moves a little box as you move your switch, and when you get it to the switch position you want, I wanna set switch position zero to plus 100. So plus is to the right and minus is to the left. Once it gets to 100, we can click. And then we'll go down to the middle one. We don't actually have to move it, but it's easier to see what's going on for you guys at home. So there's 20, and then we're gonna set this to minus 50. Okay, and then the elevator correction. Um, seriously, there's no elevator correction? Flaps programming varies. Uh, values may vary slightly for initial flights. Use the recommended flap travel. Okay, that's fine. So the only problem is what's going to happen is my B switch and my D switch are going to have to get switched because uh, they probably assigned the switches by default opposite that. Okay, so that's something I'll remember when I get all confused, hopefully. Now also here, center of gravity is there. Flap travel, takeoff is minus 27, and then landing is minus 60 millimeters. So you could get out your measuring tape and measure that. Um, the high rate and low rate, this, this is basically, the way I look at it is when I see this stuff, I see plug and fly instructions, okay? This is not a plug and fly, this is a bind and fly. It's already set up mostly, okay? Then elevator trim neutral setting, three millimeters down elevator, which again, I like, I'm just gonna do that when I'm flying, guys. I, I hate to break it to you. Some of you guys are like, oh, get out your measuring tape, Brian, you old whippersnapper. And I'm like, no, we're not doing that. This isn't an old gasser. It's going to fly great. So that being said, the Expo, the soft center, soft center, I'm glad they put that there. The soft, creamy center, high rate and low rate. Okay. They're saying 
and then 5%. Okay, so what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna do like I always do. I can't believe there's no elevator correction. That's, that's pretty crazy. And then they said to put the uh, flap action speed to two. So I'm gonna put that to two, which means that it's gonna take two full seconds from minus 100 to zero to plus 100. In our case, we're only going from plus 100 to minus 50. So that means you're gonna go from plus 100 to zero, and then you're gonna go to minus 50. So that's gonna take 1.5 seconds for that entire sweep. Did you guys catch that math? <laughs> I was mostly talking to my camera crew. Thanks. You're welcome. So, the next thing we gotta do, what was I gonna do next, camera crew? Uh, expo. Oh yeah, expo, thank you. Dual rates and expo. So, first thing I do is I always tie them to the same switch, which in my case is gonna be switch F. Switch, move it, it'll switch for ya. I always do this first because it's like way easier for me to remember. Otherwise I forget and then I set up one wrong. Okay, so they're all set to switch F. They're all tied together. Yep, some people don't like that. You can do whatever you want. This is highly subjective. My initial setting now, Horizon recommends having Expo at a, at a high rate of 10% and then a low rate of Expo to 5%. So I'm gonna start with zero in my highest setting. Then my middle setting is gonna be I guess five, and then my top setting is gonna be 10, okay? Then I'm gonna to go to elevator. At zero, it's gonna be zero. At one, it's gonna be five, okay? And then at two, it's gonna be 10. Now remember, the larger the value of Expo, the softer, the more easy it is to fly, the more relaxed it's gonna be. The lower the number or negative means it's going to be more jumpy and more excited and more caffeinated, okay? So that's how you can think of that. And then just fly it and you'll get the point. It doesn't take long to figure out what it's doing. Okay, same thing for aileron. 10 for the top setting, 5 for the middle setting, and 0 for the top, top setting here, middle. That's high, that's low, expo. High expo, low expo, neutral, meaning my first flight's going to be in the middle. If it's too caffeinated, then I give it more expo. If it's not caffeinated enough, I wake it up some, okay? Then I make my adjustments when I land. Now you can, at the same time, you can do your dual rates in here. So usually what I do is like on my top setting, they recommend having uh, the rates. Where's their rates? Do they talk about rates? Yeah. yeah, there's your rates. So they're talking about two different physical positions. Ugh, what a pain. I'm not gonna do that crap. Here's what I'll do. I'll do in my top setting, I'll drop the rate down to like 90, okay? For ailerons. So it goes to five, then it goes to 10, and it drops the rates back to 90, okay? We'll just do the same thing for all of them. So in the top setting, we'll make it just a little bit more squishy. And I might try to make my top setting like super high speed pass setting. Okay, so there's 10, so we'll just run that down to 90. Okay, and to be perfectly honest with you, I'm sort of apprehensive about those settings because normally I want this to be almost nothing, which I have set to, and then I want this to be quite a bit more, and then I want this to be about double. And right now there's a pretty significant difference in outputs on the lowest setting, okay? I don't want it to be too aggressive or it might cause me to crash. I'm not really that apprehensive. <laughs> Clear as mud, right? So now the last setting is we have to go ahead and get this thing plugged into the battery. Throttle cuts on. <sighs> gear down. Gear down, okay? Whatever gear you're gonna use, make sure they're down. They didn't tell us to flip any of the, any of the servos, right? Mm -mm, I don't think no, so. They didn't say to reverse any of them. Not on a DX18. Yeah, there's nothing that says to reverse. There are times that they talk about reversing certain servos mm -hmm. and the big, the, the important thing is because we have gear door involved, we need to make sure that the gear door open and then the landing gear have a chance to come out and then the gear door can close. I'm guessing they probably won't. There's gotta be a sequencer involved somewhere. I just closed this and I need the instructions. So this new receiver style is something that's new for me. It's the first and only time I've used this receiver. So when I plug in the battery, Hey, look at this, they have a new assigning safe switch selection. Look at that. Hmm. 
Look at that. Okay, so I didn't, I didn't notice any of this stuff because I never made it to that part. That's pretty cool. So basically, I want to leave safe select enabled. So what's going to happen is you're going to lower your throttle, you're going to connect power, you're going to press and hold the bind button, then the orange light's going to flash, then we're going to bind it, bind TX to radio, or bind TX to receiver, and then you're, what? How am I supposed to do that when I'm pressing the button? I, I have to press and hold the... Do you have to press it on the receiver? Push and hold the bind button. Or wait, one, two, three, is this the same? It goes no, one, two, three, four, four five, five, six, six. right? Mm -hmm. Do you have to push the bind button on the transmitter? Yeah, but how am I gonna do that and this at the same time? I don't know, With three hands? <laughs> Kill me, Horizon. Killing me. I'll forgive you if it's as off as, as awesome as it looks like it's gonna be, and it does look like it's gonna be pretty awesome. So, we'll go ahead and actually strap this thing in, just so you can see how that works. This is the 3200 uh, 6S, so it's about, it's on the small range. It's probably a little bit too small for this plane. According to the, jeez, uh, look at the extra slack. That's good. Yeah. That's good, actually, guys, really good. You know why that's so good? Because then, see I got extra strap there. There's nothing worse than not having a long enough strap. And that's what we have on the Carbon Z cover. Mm -hmm. really. It's too short. Let's just get right down to it. Hear that bird talking to us? Mm -hmm. the bird's like, get out here so I can see that thing fly and get scared. I had a viewer the other day got really mad at me for chasing a bird. Oh. I was like, wow, I need some like more important things to worry about. Okay, so you see this? So that's in there. It's not super duper tight. Like if I crashed, it would be allowed to slip just a little bit, but it's you're gonna have to hit ground pretty hard. So we'll just go like we're gonna fly it. Now, I, I'm gonna have to be a little bit careful about this. So I'm gonna kind of do a 45 and then just stick it to the to the pack there. Okay, see how I did that? Because you gotta keep this rail free. So that actually will work real nice. Mm. See that? That's mm -hmm. gonna also hold that so then it doesn't wanna pop off. So show the people at home what I'm doing here, if you can. See, I'm gonna ride the rail. Now I notice that these smart leads are kind of popping up and that's kind of annoying. I wonder if there's something I could do about that, like a piece of tape or something to hold those down. You see how they're down now? It's really not a big deal. But then you can snap this in and that will stay put. And then test it. Now, with retracts and landing your door and all this stuff that's going on, you need to be Johnny on the spot with this process. Because when you plug this in, obviously you don't have the prop on, frontal cuts on, Gear switch is in the down condition. The reason I have the gear switch in the down condition is because I want the fail safe to be as such. I want the gear to be down when it's fail safe. Hopefully that never happens, but if it does, I don't want to lose a plane that could otherwise land. And that's a tough call because do you want the gear up or down when you're crashing? It's tough. But it's if you go into a left hand turn, a slow left hand turn. If you could potentially land it, though, you'd want the gear to be down. Yeah, but you're not going to be controlling it. It's going to be neutral. It's oh. going to be like going in a circle. So maybe the gear up would be better. Because are you going to land on a strip when it's going? I don't know. No, probably These not. are the types of things I think about when I go to sleep at night. Must not think about it very long. <laughs> okay, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in now. My radio system is currently on. So I guess technically I'm going to turn it off. This is going to all connect, I'm sure, in just a minute. Okay, so I'm gonna plug this on, on to plug it in. Okay, I'm just gonna wait a second. Whoa, that's quite the song. So there's no orange light. So I'm gonna press and hold this until the orange light comes on. The orange light's flashing. Okay, it's flashing, that's correct. Now I'm gonna turn this on. You wanna see if you can film four things at once? Turning it on while holding the bind switch. 
binding DSMX 22 milliseconds telemetry and it is bound. Now, most of your nicer planes are going to be smart enough to know that you have no opportunity to fix your gear. So, you usually have to toggle them. Down. Whoa. That's the down. That's cool. Oh, yeah, baby. Closing. Close position. So there is an in integral sequencer in there, okay? So I didn't have to set that up. So that means there's either a sequencer in there or the sequencer is in the smart receiver, which I'm thinking it probably is in the smart receiver, but I don't know that for a fact. That is so cool. So jealous of you guys, I can't see it. Okay, now that that's done, we can get rid of the blanket, the chop suey. Okay, so now, oh, look at these gorgeous LEDs, guys. They're really bright. They are really nice. Mm -hmm. Man, they are bright, but they're recessed. As much as I love that they look so sleek, I don't love that you can't see them from many angles. I'm probably gonna cheat those out or put some glue on them. I know, I know it's embarrassing. Looks like you're down three, three degrees correction here is about perfect. Look, that's the stock configuration. See that? This is down. That'd be straight. This is down. That's 90. That's 45. That's three. <laughs> <laughs> Good math. <laughs> so now we test control surfaces. Everything should be set. Oh yeah, buddy. That looks so good. That is so good. Ailerons, ailerons, elevator, elevator, elevator. I'm looking at the other side. And then of course we got flaps. Wow, they look so good. <laughs> okay, now throttle cut is currently on. I'm gonna test it. No throttle, that's what we want. Timer's cleared. Throttle cut is off. This thing is gonna scream. Awesome, throttle cut is back on and tested. Okay, so everything is like literally ready to fly right now. Except you don't have a prop. What? Except you don't have a prop. Oh, there's that thing! <laughs> yeah, the prop. I knew that. So now, if I have a four minute timer, guys, I suspect that after my first flight and landing, okay, which is going to be commencing very shortly, um, we're gonna basically come down and we're gonna land and we're gonna see with the smart checker what we have for life left. And this is on a 3200, so it's about as small as you can get. So we do have to check the CG once we get the prop on, okay? And guys, at some point, you're gonna to have to make this thing dangerous because you gotta fly it with the prop on. At least that's what I've been told. So, I will probably need to pause so that we can get a crescent wrench. Oh, okay. I kept wanting something or expecting something to go wrong on this build and it just hasn't. It's just been like the easiest build ever. The binding process looks confusing on that document. I hate to break it to you, Horizon. But it's really not confusing because really what you're doing is you're starting this flashing lights. Yeah. Once the flashing lights are flashing, then you let go because it says the, push and hold, but yes. it never tells you to let go. That's the confusing part is you... You push and hold until the light starts flashing, and then you can let go so that you can push the buttons on your receiver. Yeah. It does say release bind button there, though. What? But it, we, you didn't do that, and uh, it worked. Well, but hold on. Did we not get safe then? Look at the bottom steps. What are the bottom steps? Um, Did I do the other process, maybe? <laughs> yes. Crap. Really? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to have to redo it. That's all right. What we're going to do is we'll do a... a quick and dirty trick where we can keep our fingers safe with the prop, okay? Do you see so what I'm doing? So how do you, it says, okay, save, select, enable, the control surface cycle back and forth twice with a slight pause at neutral position every time the receiver is powered on. So it'll cycle twice okay. if safe is enabled. I didn't count. Look at that gorgeous thing while I lay this to the front. That does look really sweet. That's really good. Wow, that's gorgeous. The Blondie is one of my favorite planes, so 
I'm assuming this one will be equally. It's going to be a lot more. Impressive. I like the color scheme a lot better in person. I do too. Like even the waves don't bother me as much as I thought. No, they would. I think they're okay. I still think it'd be better flat, right? Yeah. That's just they're I don't okay. Know. I just it's everybody has their own taste. So and this is modeled after a real thing, just like all the Horizon airplanes are. So I'm I'm torn here. So you think we did this? Yes, because yes. I'm, I don't think I did. We're positive. So basically, to get to get safe select, you have to have three hands. Yes. Because I did this process on accident. So safe is disabled. Okay, so we're going to redo this. I'm going to do it safely. Even though the prop is on, I'm going to show you a trick here, guys. If that thing were to start up, I'm holding it. Okay, I know the gear are in the correct condition now, so I don't have to worry about that. There's no ambiguity there. I've released the canopy. I'm going to... Unplug the power from the airplane. Okay, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna turn off my transmitter. Okay, my transmitter is now off. I have all the conditions the way I want them in terms of my switch conditions, my throttle stick. I'm gonna plug back in the plane. Okay, it's plugged in. Now I'm going to press and hold this. You have to wait for that. Scene. Orange light to flash. No, just waiting for the orange light. Okay, I am now holding it. Now I'm holding this thing while I'm turning on the transmitter with my third hand and I'm watching and I'm holding the plane. It says binding, DSMX 22 milliseconds, telemetry. Now I can let go of, of this, it's done. Yep. Can I let go release of this Release bind button, yes. Okay, so I release the bind button. Get on with it. That was two dances, okay? That was two dances, okay? Quick, I'm gonna test the throttle is cut. It is cut. Okay. Timer's cleared, flaps, okay? Ailerons going the correct direction, elevator going the correct direction, rudder and steer bowl, tail wheel going the correct direction. I can't test the gear right now. I'm gonna put the canopy on. Now we have to make a designation for safe select, correct? Yes. Okay, now remember guys, you have to designate safe select in a certain channel, okay? So, to do this, I'm just gonna show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to monitor mode. I'm gonna make sure switch D is attached to something. See, nothing's happening. That means it ain't gonna set anything. So you have to go into system setup. Now, this is a big plane with a big prop, so I'm gonna hold the plane in case this screws it up. RF is off, it goes into fail safe, okay? So we're safe now, we know the throttle's not gonna go. So we can go into channel assign. We can go and just look what's assigned to what. So it looks like auxiliary one is all the way through auxiliary five. And nothing is assigned to auxiliary one is probably gonna be flaps. Auxiliary two is uh, E. So E is here. So, but auxiliary one is already tied to something because we have gear and we have flaps, correct? So really what I need to do is I'm gonna go to auxiliary two and I'm just gonna assign that to D, okay? Now we'll go back out, we're gonna throttle cut, we're gonna watch, hold the plane, make sure that it's not, see how I'm holding the plane, I'm securing it just in case it would try to take off on me. I'm gonna test my throttle cut. There's been a change made, I'm gonna clear the timer. Throttle cut is on, we're good. We're going back to monitor mode. Now monitor mode is gonna show us that auxiliary two is moving, okay? Go back a little bit so they can see the switch. Okay. Moving the switch. Remember, this is not moving the switch. This is moving the switch. One, two, okay. So all the way in the neutral condition, throttle cuts on, sticks down and in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so as with other manuals from Horizon, they say five times and they mean ten. I don't know why that is. See the difference? Mm -hmm. So safe is designated on one of those and it's not designated on the other. So now I need to flip the plane over. One thing I've learned about this plane already, I don't want to get cut. And secondly, those gear door are flimsy. When you pick it up, you got to be a little bit careful because you're kind of depressing the inboard portion of this wing. So I'm going to hold the fuse and flip it over. Watch for safe. I think we're in safe. 
because it's trying to auto level. Find the middle. The reason it dances like that is because it's trying to find the quickest route to level. Okay? So as a result, safe is off. So in my say in my case, I know now which one is safe on and which one is safe off. Right now, safe is on. That's the condition I want safe to be off in, and I want to put it to safe, and I want to take it out of safe. So I need to do one more servo setup, travel, go to reverse, and you can see which one's moving in the monitor. So it's auxiliary two. So I'm going to go to aux two and press that button. Now, safe should be on, safe should be off. And it looks like it comes on at the bottom. See, you can tell from the elevator. Now it's off, now it's off, now it's off, now it's on. Because it's a three position switch, folks. All right, so throttle cuts on. Test it again. Everything's ready, it's cleared. I'm gonna flip it back over. These are the steps you take if you wanna have success. If you wanna risk it, no big deal. See, nothing. Safe is on, trying to find love. I want safe off by default for my initial flight. Now you'll notice the AS3X is not dancing. That's because we haven't given it throttle yet. And when I say given throttle, I mean the throttle stick has moved, but we've been locked out because we have throttle cut off. So at this point, we're ready to fly. Are you ready to do this? Yep, I guess so. Are you sure? Hold on, I want to hold this as beauty. <laughs> oh, we got to do the CG check. CG check, sorry. Might as well do it in here where it's comfy. Okay, there's four dots. Oh boy, she's tail heavy right now. She's tail heavy. Because I'm using a small pack. Mm -hmm. I don't even need to try to balance it because it won't balance right now. So that would have been a bad thing to start on. It would have flown poorly. Now, how do you correct that? You can either use a bigger pack or you can slide your pack forward. Now, this thing, this tray doesn't let you go any further forward. It locks into position. So what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead, now that I have everything bound up, safe select is activated. Now I can just unplug it. Oh boy, that thing is in there good. That, that's actually a good thing though. Okay, so we need to make the plane uh, more nose heavy and less tail heavy. Okay, so if we wanted to make it more tail heavy, we'd move the weight back. In this case, we want to move the weight forward. You see these little Velcro straps? We can just unfold those. See like that? And I can just scooch it all the way, probably all the way, and I don't know if that'll even be enough. I'm going to go as much as I can get, and then I'm going to just use that to hold the front one, and I'm going to use this one to hold it even more. Okay. It ain't coming out. So, that's a huge change. That should make a pretty big impact. If it's not enough, we'll just put a bigger pack in. Eh, or we can move the straps. There's actually other strap positions. Putting the batteries in the P51 Blondie was always a pain because you were trying to fly on 3S and then later on everybody was like, I'm going to fly this on 4S because it needs 4S juice, you know? And uh, Horizon eventually came out and admitted that it was fine on 4S, which took them too long. In fact, Jason, Jason was the one who mentioned that. And I was like, I'm glad somebody from Horizon finally said that. So I was really, really happy when they said that because everybody was doing it for years. Okay, so, so that's in there now. That did do the dance twice when you plugged twice it in. Twice means safe is activated. Yep. Okay. So you can also look at your elevator. It's on, so it points down a little bit more. Okay. All right, so now at this point, we're checking CG, but everything is fired up, everything is ready. To be on the safe side, throttle cut is tested. Because the prop has to be installed for this, guys, you're just gonna have to do the best you can to be as safe as you can. There's always a little bit of risk in life, okay? Okay, so I'm testing at the front, it's still tail heavy. At the back, it's getting there. I think we're just gonna put in a 4,000 milliamp. I was gonna try it on the 3200, but they recommended 3300, so maybe we just gotta go straight to the 4,000. I wanted to show the people at home what it would look like with a smaller pack, but. If you can't CG it. If, well, you can add lead weight to the front and everything. Wow. So if you wanted to fly it on a smaller pack, you just get shorter flight times. But I don't wanna risk my biscuit on this. No. Not for that. Mm -mm. 
Plus, if I plan on doing this with a 5,000 milliamp power, that's a lot bigger pack. Yeah. I mean, just think of the ratio of 3,300 or 3,200 to five. Yeah. That's a big difference. Okay. So just go ahead and try to pull this out. Ooh, that worked nicely. Okay, so awesome pack, may not be quite suitable. And, and like I said, if, if, if you just had this pack or you only had it, you just couldn't live without flying this, you could take these Velcro straps out. You're gonna have to lengthen the hole though. See that, it's narrower, mm -hmm. okay? So we're just gonna go straight up to the, uh, straight up to the 4,000. Let's do the, let's do the test on it right now. Let's see what it looks like. Let's stick it into the, S1200, man, I really like the 1200. It's been good. I actually don't hate me, people, but I like the 1200 better than the 1500 because it's got the screen that shows you how much is left in the charge. 99er. We set this to discharge automatically after 240 hours or 480 hours. What was it? It wasn't two weeks. It was 10 days. 10 days. 10 days, so 240 hours. Yeah. So this thing doesn't really need to be charged, so I'm just gonna actually stop it. And we're gonna unplug it and we're gonna use this one, see if we get the CG to work out. Also, we need to put this lanyard back on. When you made in a plane, don't get ahead of yourself. Do things the way you always do it. Even if it's kind of weird and special to what you do, it's gonna give you the best chance of success. Okay, so this, this one is a little bit girthier. No, this is that word. Gear the earth. Yeah. So everybody, everybody says it that way. Okay, so you'll notice that my Velcro ended up on the other side, so I'm actually going to make it so that this this is 4,000 milliamp hour. That's also 50C, baby. So we're going to stick that in there. It's backward. And when I say backward, I mean the correct way. Because then we can do that little wrap that we did before. That's quite a bit bigger pack. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that's a, good, really that's a good fit. Look at this, I can still do that little yep. trick I did. Oh, that's gonna work nice. Guys, it's just so much, it's so much easier. You're not bending over. It doesn't seem like a big deal, but man, if it's a pain to get batteries in a plane, it is, it just kind of like ruins the experience. And you all know what I'm talking about. If you've been flying for more than a couple of minutes, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If it's a pain to load batteries, you just almost don't even want to fly the plane. Which is funny, it seems so menial, but after you've flown a hundred of them, you're like, I don't want to have to hassle with it. Truth. Oh yeah, it's in there good. Oh yes. Chew. Mm -hmm. In you go. Uh, Gotta say, not a big fan of that thing because you have to open it and then let it fall down. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it doesn't go. Okay, so first test throttle cut is working. Timer's clear. Elevator, rudder, everything's working. Okay, so the only thing we have to do is literally go outside and make sure it's not too windy to fly. And if it is too windy to fly, we're probably still gonna fly anyway because that's the way I roll. <laughs> the flight is coming right. YouTube, if you haven't seen the build yet, you haven't seen the radio setup, or all the wonderful perils involved. Actually, it was like the easiest build ever, so please watch it. <laughs> We're gonna fly this thing. It's a little bit windy. Show the people the wonderful uh, Grumpy John flying sock there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, John. You are grumpy. <laughs> all right, throttle cuts off. We're going to taxi out and take off because the wind is coming straight down the runway, the main runway. Normally we use the uh, crosswind strip here, but uh, we're going to get this going, guys. Control surfaces are retested, okay? This thing is awesome. We're flying on the 4,000 milliamp 50C Smart Pack. Oh, that thing is tremendously powerful. We do have safe on this plane. Safe is off for now. I want you to be probably there for now. You're good. Okay. Out of the flaps. 
I am like holding my elevator all the way back here, guys. Don't like that. It sucks to land that way. We are going to probably have to redo this. Hey, hon, I want you to come by the road, please. Okay, do three steps back so you're into the threshold, that skirt. Okay, full landing flaps deploying, hoping for a little bit of a balloon here. We're clear on the roadway, obviously. anywhere near enough elevator authority I ended up dialing in a 100% adjustment to the trim so we're gonna work on that now and come right back okay guys I want to talk to you about what just happened uh, obviously that was like the, the maiden technically I did land it was not like really a horrible landing but it wasn't great either um, I don't really feel like that's the video that's going to start the flight series, so like, not to be deceptive at all, but we're going to probably start with our good flight. <laughs> but I wanted you to see what we're going to do to fix that problem, okay? So you can see my elevator correction is minus 100 right now. So what I was doing is as I was flying, I was having to give it 100% input to get that thing to fly, okay? That was scary, okay? And when I say fly, I mean fly straight. And there was no elevator correction on flap deployment, so thank God there wasn't. So. Two things are going to happen. One, I'm probably going to be changing that elevator so that it's in the holes out because I want more impact, first of all. Second of all, I'm going to be changing the ball so that when I adjust this to zero, it's at least level. Because if you want to give them a shot, then maybe this angle would be the best angle. Okay. It's kind of hard. There's so much going on on this plane, it's kind of hard to see it. Of course, my wheels are dirty now. I apologize for my dirty wheels. You can see how that's down just a little bit, guys. The manual speaks to a 3% down, okay? I just want to tell you something right now. I'm at minus 100, and that looks really close to the way we set it up earlier, okay? So the two problems are that's full up elevator, that's full down elevator, okay? I want more deflection, for one. You can always go in and you can change your differential or your dual rates in Expo, on the elevator if you want to deaden that a little bit. You can also change the rates. Now, I agree going to the innermost holes is going to give you more resolution. Okay, you're going to have more torque and more responsiveness and you're not wasting the end of the throw that you don't ever use. Okay, so you're going to have more precision. But if you go to an outermost hole, you're going to have more deflection, which means you can counteract that more. So like if I had a trim to minus 100 and I was in one hole more out, then that plane would have probably been okay to fly, okay? But we're just gonna err on the safe side. So the throttle cut is on just to be clear. Now, the reason I had the plane on for this test, and I didn't wanna do this outside because I didn't wanna put the prop on the ground like this. So as you can see, look here, guys. So you got the control horn here, and you gotta get this thing off of the ball joint. And then you can, if you come over from this angle, I don't know if you can see it, but right here, there's, there's threads, okay? So you're gonna actually take this, and it's going to get spun so that the elevator gets closer to level. Because like right now, I'm at minus 100, okay? So in order to, in order to fix that minus 100, I'm going to go, I want my plane to be almost level, actually. So I'm going to go until this says zero, and it'll stop at zero briefly. Okay, so that's centered. Look how much that is. Okay, so now I need to fix that with this and I want more output. And so I'm gonna change this. So I'm probably gonna go out to just the middle hole, the next one that's, in, that's out from there. Okay, so the camera crew is gonna take back over. These things are kind of challenging to get off sometimes. And the easiest way I've found is first try with your fingernail. If it comes off, great. If not, then you have to go to a flat bladed screwdriver and then you can usually get them like really, really easy. But you do have to be aware, if you do it, sometimes you will actually break the ball joint. So be careful. There is a Phillips screw there. If you're uncertain, you can undo the screw. See what I'm doing? I'm just finding a point where I can make a lever. And I'm going to get in here and I'm going to pop it off. 
very gently. So I don't want to break either the control horn and I don't want to break the ball joint. See how hard it is to get off of there? That's probably a good thing. The other option is you can take this cover off, remove the servo and undo the top screw, which would be ridiculous, but you could hypothetically do that too. There it goes. Okay, so I got it off of there. So now, what I want to do is, you see how this is neutrally located here? I want this in its neutral position to be almost true with the molding, okay? Now for me, that might mean that I have a little bit more difficulty when I'm pulling the tail wheel up on a takeoff, okay? Especially when it's high winds like we were dealing with, okay? So now I need to rotate this out and I'm gonna walk it up as high as I can and then just like try to keep that thing from gouging all the paint. Okay, so now I'm out. Now I'm just gonna verify I'm coming out one hole, not two. You guys might wanna go all the way out. I don't know, it just depends on what your flying style is. Okay, get in there. I don't know if Horizon actually ringed out that other hole. That might be why I'm struggling here. Do you see what's going on? Yeah, it's just not going through. It's not going through. It's, it's gonna go, it's gonna be fine. I just need a little bit of help with the tool. So I'm gonna use just regular needle nose pliers. I'm gonna support the end and I'm gonna try to push it through. And if it doesn't go, then I'll have to ream it out with the drill bit. Now it's gonna, it's gonna go. Am I going the right way? Yeah, I think that's the That's way gonna go, go over here, then I'm gonna pivot it around. Yeah, yep. that's correct. So that's actually a lot easier to put in that way too. Because you're not fighting it into this opening, mm -hmm. that weird opening spot. I don't know why they had us doing that. That seems kind of crazy. After having flown it for the first time, that was like scary. Because this plane is gorgeous. I would not want to be crashing it, especially not over something like that. Okay, so I've got that into the next most, outermost hold oil there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up where I want it, okay? So I can see where the control needs to be. And then I can see where that needs to be. And I just hold them side by side until I get it where I want it. So I'm gonna bring this out. Probably looks like about maybe three and a half turns. Then I'm gonna just uh, kind of line it up there, but don't snap it. Okay, now I need a little bit more. Okay, so that's a little bit more. There you go. So see, we're just under the molding line there. So I'm gonna see if one more half a turn. Now you do run the risk if you do this too far. See, that's totally flush now. If you do that too far, you may not have any connection inside of there. And then you're just totally screwing yourself over. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. I gotta get a light though. Do we have a light somewhere around here, like a flashlight? Yes, we do. Does it work? Yes, it does. Amazing. Okay, so guys, look what I'm doing. Oh man, that's, hold on. I don't wanna blind everybody in their house. Show the people at home what I'm talking about. That's one way to test because it's opaque. It's a little bit hard to see. What I'm going to do secondarily is I'm going to take an ultra fine Sharpie. This is, this is important guys. If you get this wrong, you're going to lose your plane. Unless you ask Ian, Ian thinks elevators are, are optional. Cause that was rudders. No, oh. <laughs> he said elevators are optional, but he was talking about cell planes. So, okay. So the black is going to be where we bring it out. So let's see how many turns we've got. Oh, that makes me feel so much better. Look, we've got mm -hmm. all those threads. Yeah. I was thinking we were just right, right on the, the edge. edge. So guys, look at that. Look at that. We've got half again as much mating surface there. Yeah, that's, that's acceptable. I can live with that risk, okay? If it still pulls out with that many, uh, that many threads in there, yeah. it was bound to pull out. I can feel it biting good now. Okay, so I'm comfortable with that. Guys, that, that level of TLC is how you make your plane survive. Oh, I'm just listening. Okay, there it goes. Man, that's tight. Okay, just making sure it's free and then testing. Elevator up, elevator down, elevator up. Look where it's hitting. See, look, hitting. It just scraped a little bit of plastic out of the way. So watch what I'm going to do next, guys. This is rocket science time here. We're going to get a rocket, rocket surgery toolkit here. Brain surgery. No, it's rocket surgery because it's brain surgery and rocket science mixed into one. 
See, I got a heavy tool here that's gonna help me. Ah, oh, dang, it's not quite heavy enough. Do you want me to Can you hold the hold elevator down, down, camera crew? Can you handle that? Yeah. Okay. You don't need to be making that noise, you little turd. So now I'm just gonna guide my finger. Just take a little teeny bit of this material, and I'll show you as soon as I'm done, guys. Okay, then I'm gonna come down from the top. Oh man. Okay, now let go. Oh yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous clans. That would have totally hit before when it was on the inside. Yeah. That, I mean, that, mm. that's satisfactory. That's no big deal. This decal has a couple of points where the, uh, the decal couldn't depress because of air pockets. And if you ever want to fix that, you can take the X-Acto knife and you can depress the air out too. Just like that. And it'll pull right out. You could use a pin. It would be a little bit less caveman style. But I prefer the caveman style. Oh man, that is so gorgeous. Guys, it is amazing with airplanes. The devil is in the details. I'm dead serious about this. You know, I'm, I'm not even like some sort of an expert on this stuff. And that was a pretty major issue in flight. Okay, now that my heart has stopped racing, <laughs> let's show the people at home one final look of how nice and clean that is. See, we've got that just right lined up with the panel line. Elevator up, elevator down, okay? That's in the fully diminished 90% outputs. That's your full output. That's your full output with no expo. That's 5% expo, okay? Diminished. That's full output. That's full output with 5%. That's with 10% and 90% output throw, okay? Again, when we fly, we always start in the neutral position, the middle setting, okay? Right, camera crew? Mm -hmm. Always. All right, disappointed because that didn't go as smooth as I would like, but not a, not a deal breaker. So now, when you watch to the end, you'll get your little Easter egg. And that was your Easter egg, how to save your P-51 Mustang 1.5. And by the way, this thing is gorgeous. It is just absolutely gorgeous. And to have a retractable tail wheel, and on my really true maiden, not to get to retract it, just really hurt my soul. It did, it hurt my soul. But the plane's back in one piece. My pride is still intact, partially, because if you watch the landing, it sucked. This thing is good, so I like it. It's good. You should get one. Check the link in the description below. Obviously, you're going to want to fly it. It's going to be awesome. You're going to love it. Come back for more. All right, YouTube. We're going to try again. The other day, we ran out of daylight, and it got like crazy windy. So we're going to try this again. We've got the 1.5 meter E-Flight P-51. 5,000 milliamp hour, 30C smart pack. We'll show you the positioning. It is way forward on that tray, like as far forward as you can go. Got the elevator figured out. A little bit more throws on that. Ailerons, everything should be ready to go. Takeoff flaps are dialed in. We're gonna watch this elevator. I do not want to nose this over. So we're gonna probably relax into the throttle real slow. Way better. Gear up. Flaps out. Lots of roll. Lots of roll right now. Man, that thing is fast. Holy goodness gracious. Take off flaps in. First pass, full throttle. I want to get my roll corrected, but there's a little bit of gustiness. That's full throttle. Geez, that's fast. Man, that thing looks good, doesn't it? Yeah. We're going to be going with the wind here, folks. <laughs> Sweet! Really fast. It feels heavier than I figured it would. Okay, yeah, there's my takeoff flaps.
this off lap, so we'll do a slow pass this time. That is way slow. Avoiding the uh, no passing zone sign there. Oh wait, that's an intersection ahead. What is that thing? Stop ahead, I think, or T intersection. I had to do about three clicks of trim there, by the way, and about four clicks of left on my rudder. We're gonna see how that does. Playing it real safe here, guys. We're gonna do full landing flaps here. I want you on my other side, please. Thank you. That's perfect. Go one step back up. Don't step back. Good job. 30% throttle and full flap deployment. That thing is slow. Into the power, a little bit of a nose dip when we switched. That's full rudder and full elevator. Got a good roll rate. I'm at 90% output on my dual rates. And I got my Expo at 10% on all surfaces. I'd like to kick a little bit more in for elevators since we did the higher throws. Let's try shooting a landing here. Okay, got the gear coming down. We're in the takeoff flap setting. Way back there, just because I want to have room, guys. Checking for gear. Camera crew, call it out when you see it. Full landing flaps coming down. Yep. Do not be shy. Just a touch and go. Oh, yeah! Really good, really good. Don't need any elevator correction, guys. I thought I would need it. It's feeling good. I want to get those drop tanks off of there just as soon as possible, to be perfectly honest. Oh, crap, I forgot to clear the timer. Nice speed pass. Man, that thing looks good. You hear that? Something's oscillating. Yep. Mm -hmm. What is it? Decal or something? Okay, we're gonna do it again, and then we're probably gonna have to come in and land and check the voltages. Guys, confused winds here. We just got a little bit more wind coming in. That's just ailerons. I want to show you a stall. There you go. There's your stall. Getting back to flying. Okay, we're gonna try landing. Take off flaps deployed. Landing gear coming out. We hope. We're gonna come up here, we're gonna throw the landing gear, excuse me, the full landing flaps. Here pretty quick, here's full landing flaps. Looking at the gear, man, those drop tanks are deceptive, aren't they? Yep. It looks like the gear is stuck. Mm -hmm. And you gotta fly that thing fast. You gotta fly that thing fast to keep her going. Okay, no screwing around here, I gotta land. Okay, takeoff flaps are gonna be deployed. Landing flaps deployed, coming in for a little bit steeper landing. Here come the gear. Watch for the gear, call them as soon as you can. I've got the yep. nerves with a nice, beautiful new plane. I wanna to try to get the touchdown good this time. As you can see, it wasn't like an exceptionally difficult landing. This ditch is deep. And so I'm not afraid of spinning it a little bit, guys, because I'll be honest with you, this thing's got a little bit of a little bit of weight to it, and when it goes, it goes like it wants to roll. My issue is not the amount of control authority on that tail dragger. My issue is historically on tail draggers, once you get it down on the ground, you don't know. And the other day when we landed it and wanted to go in the ditch, this ditch is far. Let's show the people how far down that. Yeah, is. that would not. I don't want the plane rolling off because no. this thing's gonna get all screwed up. All right. Woo! I mean, I don't get scared for planes much anymore, but man, when they're as beautiful as this thing, you don't want it to break, and it's just gorgeous. Look how awesome it looks. And if it was dead calm, I wouldn't be as concerned, but it's just this wind is like coming out of nowhere. So basically, you've got like the limp windsock, and then all of a sudden, yeah. you'll get like a five mile an hour gust, and it's not a five mile an hour gust that's real controlled. Like it's coming from three different directions, and we've got that one sign right there, which makes me nervous. I'm not worried about the uh, about the mailbox because we're standing in front of it, but I am worried about that sign because it's a little bit hard to see. So uh, some some crazy person might go out there and spray paint it with orange paint. I don't know who would possibly do that, <laughs> but uh, don't tell the county. All right, we're gonna test the voltages here, and I want to show you something, guys, because this bat this battery. We had to stuff it way in there. Yeah. And this is the 5,000 milliamp hour pack, okay? So I, I'm still feeling like maybe it could go a little bit forward uh, for stability. 
Um, but I mean, in terms of the landings, they look like they were pretty greasy and I'm happy with that. But the thing is, we've got crown on the road. We got a little bit of wind. We got shifting wind. So it's like, ah, I just don't want to put it in a ditch right now. So we'll pull out the trusty. I'm just going to show you what it looks like here. We can always plug this back in, of course. So as, as we mentioned, 5,000 milliamp hour. Look how far that sucker's riding in there. Yeah. That thing is way in there. And what I've done is I took the Velcro and I'm just using this Velcro to hang on to it so it can't shift its position. I mean, the absolute position left to right is probably not a big deal. All right. Whew. Still nervous. <laughs> I was going to say, you can breathe now. I mean, it's on the ground, but. I know. All right, guys. Look at that. 61%. Oh. Hold on. There you go. So we're at 61 percent guys hmm. that's 3.9 volts we would have been okay but yeah. you know what i did rookie mistake i forgot to clear my my timer i know so right now it says 11 minutes and i have no idea because what we did was we tried to start it inside and then for whatever reason i must have been screwing with the throttle to test my throttle cut yeah and then i never i never cleared it so that being said um one thing I got to figure out is the telemetry. I haven't figured out the telemetry yet on this unit, but it's obviously got the smart uh, ESC and it's got the smart receiver. So we should be able to get some pretty robust telemetry um, through the system, but I'm not 100% sure that's going to be supported on a Gen 1 DX18. So I have to do a little bit of research on that end. Um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to pause it and we're going to probably gear this up for a little bit more flying time just because I'm, I'm certain we can get away with it. Um, we're probably going to do one more. When you landed, you were only right at like about four minutes on the video. And you talked just a second at the beginning. So you probably didn't actually even go to the full four we set it without to, timer. Did we set it to four? I, I think that's what you set it for. And see, I'm just going to go, I'm just going to go all in. I'm, I'm one strapping it here. I mean, because to be honest with you, that thing is in there still. I, I don't like having to ride it so far, but it's like, I'm not going to add lead in there. Not when I can put a battery in there. I mean, so you're going to fly again on that battery? Yeah, I'm going to fly again, but I'm going to set a short timer. Okay. It'll probably consist of like a takeoff and a landing, mostly to see how the CG works out here, guys. Um, so far, the little tray has been working okay. Once you once you get it figured out, though, you'll have you'll yeah. know like where it's going to go. This Except I'll probably fly this on a 5,000 milliamp hour pack and a 4,000 milliamp hour pack. Again, 6S, folks. It's a big battery. It's a... A lot of juice there. Come on, initiate. There it goes. Oh, you know why it was fighting? Because we're not completely, totally level here. We got a little bit of a drainage slope here. I think that's probably why it was complaining. And I'm having a little bit of trouble getting this to latch for some reason. I don't know if I'm slowing it down from going in the hole here a little bit. I did notice this canopy, um, the fit, I mean, it looks really nice, but it's not maybe as good a fit as I've seen on some other Horizon products. I don't know if maybe I got a bunk unit or what, but I mean, it's beautiful and it's very gorgeous inside, but the thing is it doesn't quite make it to the end, doesn't which is a little look. bit weird on that panel yeah. line. I've never seen that from a Horizon product, especially no less a big one like this. Um, okay, so my timer is currently, just so you guys can see, my timer is currently set on a one out timer to four minutes. So what I'm gonna do is just for safety reasons, I'm just gonna go down to timer. I'm just gonna set that down to like two minutes. If it goes off, that means that I'm gonna try to land. Do you have I, a voltage alarm in there? I, I don't have a voltage alarm okay. in there because I, I shouldn't need it. And so uh, pause it a second, I'll look at telemetry. Okay. All right, guys, scroll down to telemetry. You have to be plugged in. You have to be bound and operational, okay? Go to settings, go to auto config. So it's gonna automatically configure your telemetry, which is gonna throw those settings onto your screen, ESC and RPMs, and then the receiver pack, and then G-Force, awesome. That's pretty cool. So then you can scroll with your little knob thing, and you can see what your receiver voltage, you can see your time, you can see your receiver pack voltage, and then of course you've got receiver voltage. There we go, that's the screen that's awesome. RPMs, you've got your FET temperature, your throttle percentage, your motor percentage, and then you got your BC temperature, your amps, and your volts. Okay, the BC meaning the, the battery eliminator circuit, 
which is going to control all your servos and your receiver, um, or it's going to juice them up. And then this is your this is your pack. Okay. So yes, you can set up um, you can set up alarms for that. And I'm trying to remember if I can do that. If I have to do it in telemetry file system one time, I'm probably going to play with that. If you select. Yeah, know. flight log. I don't want that one. Yeah. Volts. There you go. And I can set an alarm. See how it says 1S? This is 6S. Okay. The minimal volts would be 18 volts. Do I want it to alarm? Actually, I have to do math. Like, what is what is the voltage I need? If I want 3.8 volts times six, I'm gonna use my wife's wonderful camera crew technique to uh, take out her phone and do the math because I'm not used to putting in the voltage for a voltage alarm, guys. I usually just do a, like a timer. What'd you say, 3.8 times six? Uh, three, three point, do 3.6, 3.6 times, times six. six. 21.6. 21.6, okay, so yeah. I'll just do like 21. So that's gonna be 3.5, okay? okay. All right, I'll do I'll do twenty one point six. Be careful. This okay, twenty one point six, guys. Okay. So the active, and then it says alarm, and I'm going to do a tone and vibrate. Okay. okay. So now there's going to be a tone and vibrate alarm for that, and there's going to be a two minute alarm. Okay. So I'm not sure exactly how that manifests itself, but once the timer alarm goes off, then it's going to go from two to one. It'll it should beep at one. To warn me that we have one minute left and then it's going to tone and vibrate and it's going to make the noise then later on when we actually hit that low voltage then we can bring it to the ground and safely do that but you feel this wind like all it's of a crazy sudden because the crazy. wind sock's not moving as much well now it is well, now but it it's is. a lot windier it's a lot windier than it looks okay so yeah final cuts on it's been tested i'm going to just check the cg now with it all the way forward so there's two glue spots here guys Remember, there's some level of ambiguity. Okay, so my fingers are right between, I'm trying to get it so that the wind isn't impacting the, the angle of incidence. So like if I go to the front one, it feels a little on the tail heavy side. If I go to the back one, it feels a little on the nose heavy. So I gotta say it's right in the middle right now. I mean, there's no other way to put it. So these P51s, anybody who's flown them knows there's quite a bit of P factor involved and you gotta get it to stand up on its veins. And uh, so it's a little bit of a balancing act, but I'm excited to do it. And the wind is, has lulled down. So I got two minutes of uh, pure bliss here. And I'm gonna wait, because if you look at the wind sock, show them, see it's crosswinding, and then it's going straight down the runway. So it's kind of like, oh yeah, make up your mind, mother nature. Yeah. Which I'm one kidding. are you gonna do? See, we got the crosswind strip here. It'd be perfect right this second, but then all of a sudden, then it's perfect on the main runway. We have just a, a huge straightaway. This is 1,220 feet of pure bliss, guys. They built this uh, road right before we moved in. And uh, it goes to the cemetery, and then it stops, and it's gravel. All right, here we go. All right, two minutes left, guys. Heavy on the elevator back. Keep that tail dragging. Get some airspeed. Get her in the air, baby. Out of the gear, out of the flaps. Straight spots, please. Go back to where you were. issue there whoa what was that did you did you yeah. hear that mm -hmm. what the heck was that i don't know i think it was wind hitting the prop because i was idle take off flaps deployed should have taken those drop tanks off full landing flaps get in the throttle man look at that turbulence off those wind off those trees Wow. I need to dial in a little bit more expo on my elevator too. Remind me of that when I get landed, okay? Okay. We're gonna go just a little bit more on the expo for, uh, and then we're gonna go a little bit lower on the rates. Okay, gear coming down. Okay, we're into the landing flaps. You hear that noise again? You need to just stay where you are, okay? So I know where you are, yep. please. You're perfect, don't move, please. Get on the ground. Oh, dang it. In the ditch. 
too. Well, the good news is there's taller grass down there. So we're going to go see what the damage was. Hopefully it's nothing. Okay. All right, guys. Are you back with me? Yeah. Camera crew is going to hold that. I'm going to go down here. Luckily, it didn't go into a super wet spot. You can see we got all this tall grass and stuff. Yeah. Oh, dang. That was an unfortunate clip of the wing with that piece of stick. Any damage? Not that I can see. These landing gear guys are great. Um, they really are super, super nice, high quality landing gear. Guys, she's totally unscathed. Yeah, I don't I'm see really anything. Happy. Okay, a couple things, let's taxi some. I wanna show the people at home because obviously, like I said, crown of the road, if you had a big enough strip, it would be no issue at all. Control surface test, everything is solid. That's no input, and we got a little bit of tendency to the right. Now what that is, is that's my airspeed was keeping me going straight, but then once I'm on the ground, of course, I've got that to correct. So it's challenging to do that, and you guys all know what I'm talking about. But you can see she sat on the mains just fine. In fact, I kind of wanted to keep her on the mains because it was so much easier to control it. And look how easy it rolls, guys. Yeah. That's part of the problem is, look at this. There's like no resistance on those wheels. That is really uncommon on these planes. Um, I know Freewing has a few that are like that. That 810 that I just did the other day, which by the way is about half the size of this plane, if not less. So that thing going 110 miles an hour in real life looks like it's going about four times faster than this. It's going like 80 plus miles an hour but it doesn't seem near as fast. Plus we've got a headwind and it's pretty stout. So I cannot wait to see this thing fly in decent weather. Why don't you come up with me? We're gonna taxi this back. I think we're totally unscathed though. We lucked out. I don't see anything from- The grass is tall plants. enough that it just it just stopped it before. And, and this finish, this paint is almost like, it's almost like Duracoat guys. So you, or like a monocoat sort of finish because it's so thick. The white lines, this is just foam, I believe, right? Yeah, that's just naked foam. This is paint and this is paint, and that stuff is thick. So you're gonna get a lot of protection from that. Now, our next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna see what that alarm does on my radio system, just to demonstrate how that works. This thing taxis, actually pretty good, but man, when you get far enough away like that, boy, I have a heck of a time keeping that tail under under control. I almost need to have like a crazy, a crazy expo setting in the lowest setting and then have, you know, something in the middle that's gonna be like a regular flying mode and then have like an, ex well, I'll probably have like a regular flying mode and then like a low pass, high speed pass and then I'll have like a landing so that it deadens that input on the rudder mm -hmm. because it's just, once you get that tail down, it's just squirrely. Not as bad as the uh, Spitfire, but they definitely wake you up. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the old trusty hold the plane while we run the throttle until we can see the warning, okay? Because I did not fly to the full two. You wanna get a shot of that. Okay, so we'll just show you telemetry since I'm, um, all right, how about we do this? I wanna see what telemetry is gonna be good. Oh, wow, that's cool, look at that. You can see all the axis. That is awesome. Look at that. <laughs> Sweet. Do you see that? Yeah. Pitch roll and yaw axis. Wow. And you can see the maximum rates of change. That's crazy. Man, there's all sorts of cool things on here. I didn't know you had that stuff in here. Okay, throttle cuts off. All right, guys, I'm going to do this safe. So just don't get too freaking this 9200 RPMs. There's 18,000 RPMs. 43% throttle. Where's our voltage? There it is, 22. So what did we set it to, 21.6? Yeah, I think so. Man, this thing is just really powerful. I don't want to damage any of the foam. Give them a view of this thing. Don't stand right in the prop wash in case it blows up. I can barely hold it. It's crazy. Guys, that's like 
I'm like having a hard time holding this thing. I don't want to do this because it's so old school, but the problem is I just don't want to rip off the tail. So come over here so they can see what's going on here. Here, I want them to see the throttle and everything. We're looking for the warning. It should go by now, shouldn't it? 21.6 is what we set, wasn't it? Yeah. That noise was that noise was most definitely that was when I hit a basically a, a front of wind and you could hear it, it almost sound like it got smacked yeah. I, I hope you guys could hear it in the video but it's freaky because I'm like wait did something just break loose okay throttle cut is on and tested by the way guys so that is incredible um, so we did not have the alarm so now we can figure out what we did wrong telemetry Maybe I didn't save it. So settings, whoops. Did you guys hear that? Okay. Bolts, right? Yeah, I have to highlight that one, don't I? So if I go in there, well, what the heck? Display is active. Active? I don't have the max on, but I don't care about that. Hey, it says 7S now. What the heck? You better not change it again. What do we do, 20? 20? 21.6. Well, let's just do 20 and see what happens. Because I think we were above 20 still. And guys, I didn't see like sagging at all. It's crazy. Under load, it barely sags. And this is a huge electrical load. I mean, there's nothing quite like a huge load, right? So I've been told. So here we go. Okay, just walking it up slowly. I've got it braced against my ankles here. I don't want to break this thing. So we're just watching this. I want to hear that tone and vibrate. That's pull in. Look at my leg. This is ridiculous. It's like crazy amounts of wind. This thing, this, these packs, guys, these packs just don't give up at all. I'm at 100% throttle. I'm like doing a torture test. I'm going to move the ailerons too because that makes load too. Flaps. Ailerons, flaps. You know, simulating the workload of the... All right, I'm, I'm getting a great idea. Why don't, we, why don't we set this alarm to a different point? Okay, so I'm going back into telemetry because I don't want to wait around on it. Volts, volts. So let's set this to like 20 point, uh, was eight. it eight? Yeah. Okay. And guys, I got to, okay, so I want to know if it works like if I'm in just a regular mode, okay? Okay, I'm trying to make sure it's hitting my legs evenly so I don't break it. Ooh, that smells. You smell that? Yeah. Okay, so I want to walk out of there and I want to go over to 130, 32 I was degrees. like only 114 like last time you went to that screen. Okay, so evidently we're doing something wrong because I'm not getting the alarm. Guys, if you know how to do it, you just let me know. Throttle cut's on and tested, just for the record. Now, let's go ahead and look inside and hopefully we didn't just kill this hundred plus dollar battery. Yeah. Because that would kind of make my day <laughs> less good than it already was. Neat. All right, guys. I have a voltage checker in my pocket. 
lights just came on up there. Yeah, must be eight, whatever. All right. Oh, it's actually warm. I'm checking the receiver too. Feel it. Ooh, yeah, it's, it's, it's warm. warm. It's not. It's not. It's not anything crazy. Hot. Though. I've it seen worse. Nice, actually, it's cold. It's cold out here. Um. Okay. So we got the voltage tester here. We're to plop this sucker on. The battery did not shift. Mm -mm. Oh, it's gonna take a few flights to get the nerves out on this one. I'm yeah. sorry, guys. I want it to be so awesome, and it's still kind of scary flying a big new plane that you don't want to crash. Come over here and look. So we got 18% left, evidently. Before absolute shutdown and self-destruct. <laughs> Before it blows up into a million pieces? Yes. So I would say that at this point, guys, I would say that... But... You smell that again? Does, is it the battery? Mm -mm. It's not the battery. It's not this. That's always a bad smell. <laughs> Well, it smells a little spicy in there, actually. But if you set a little China cheapy voltage alarm, those are 3.6 usually, aren't they? I can set it to whatever I want. Well, down to like you usually do. Or whatever. You can set it. You can set it at a bunch of different spots. Right. I think the ESC is just genuinely hot right now, and there's adhesive on there, and the adhesive is heating up. So, um, well, note to self, uh, I got to figure out how to set that alarm. Yeah. So we can use it because that'd be handy to have. Mm -hmm. uh, this battery is rock solid. I mean, yeah. If you can fly it at 100% throttle and only have, I mean, I I did. It seemed like maybe there was a little bit of an appreciable difference in in output, but you're always gonna have a certain amount of change in output. But on my old packs, I would have I would have pulled this sucker out, and it would have been like plump, like yeah. like uh you know a, a bratwurst. You know, <laughs> it would have been bad. Um, so I gotta say, I mean, torture test wise. By the way, that was the first time I've used this battery, too. Come in here and yeah. feel this. Like, put the uh, camera crew hand inside of there. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, it's pretty little, warm it's in little, there. It's a little toasty in there. It is. Um, I hope we didn't just uh, figure out how to destroy the motor. But, I mean, it is what it is. That's why we do these tests, right? So, I guess, I don't know if we're going to go ahead and publish this and then do, like, a follow-up in a couple of days or if we're just gonna have another flip that comes in right now. But one way or another, I can tell you, this plane is pretty cool, but it is uh, definitely one of the harder planes um, to fly in, in less than stellar conditions. I would say this is, this would qualify as less than stellar, yeah. but I wouldn't say it's horrible. Like the other day when we tried to fly, it was straight up horrible. Um, so I think what we need to do, I think we owe this plane just a nice calm weather flight, you know, like a relaxing sunset beautiful calm not crosswind like that yeah it's showing the crosswind that's just unacceptable for a maid you know because you just don't know the plane yet i mean you can get it up get it down i obviously landed it three times in horrific conditions um wait four four times right we did four landings total because we did the one three. landing initially yeah something like that and we did this yeah well three or four three or four that's one. close i don't know we could review the footage but this smart pack and this P51 1.5 meter, it's it's something. It's beautiful. And the landing gear seem to be solid. That's one of the other things that people have had problems with, especially on these where you got to get them up on the mains to do your landings. I don't know. We'll have to review the footage. I can't even remember. Were they good landings or not? They were, they were pretty decent. It's just it's the just, control when it's the wood's windy. It's just the control once you get the tail dragger down. Yeah. Yeah. And to be honest with you, you were blowing a ton of, a ton of wind is going to go across those control surfaces even when you got the tail drop so i really don't have any excuse for it so the next time we fly this it's going to be without drop tanks because i feel like there's a lot of drag being induced there and i would like to get rid of them so i it's scary too when you're coming in because those drop tanks make it look like you had like a partial yep. uh, deployment of your landing gear totally and so you know these lighting conditions and having silver landing gear and black and then silver drop tanks it looks like they're half cocked and there's nothing worse than coming in with a people my my blondie used to do that and i would always have to have the camera crew call out landing gear deployment and there's been a time or two where i never actually did land with one half cocked but 
I had one that would go down 100% of the time, and then I had one that would go down about 90% of the time. I think we landed in the grass a couple times, though, without them. No, didn't we? not without them. Did we ever get them? I landed into a curb once. Oh, but well. That was, that was a <laughs> Another landing gear's fault. <laughs> All right, guys, come back for more. There is more to come. In fact, if you haven't seen it yet, it's coming right now. All right, guys, we almost forgot to show you. I wanted to show you two things real quick about this plane. Uh, I was saying that it's about twice as big as this A-10. Uh, this is just like a regular, kind of like a kitchen table. We used to have four chairs. This is yeah, it's not very big. When Megan and I were first married, we had a townhouse, and so this was our main table. And then when we started having a bigger family, we, of course, had a bigger table. So, but anyway, the point is, I wanted to show you, you know, like these planes that I've reviewed of, of recent, you know, with flaps, the Cessna Citation Launch 2 GMX. This is the A10. And then right here, you can see I put this under the table. And I actually had to stick the wing, I just because I didn't want to take the end off. It's actually pretty hard to get those wings off. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, that's a good thing because I don't want this thing to come off in flight. But it's kind of nice because we've got it tucked under here. And, you know, when we're first reviewing a plane, we usually have it in our living space for at least a few days. And my, like, pseudo commitment to the camera crew so that she doesn't kill me is that when I'm kind of done with, like, my first few flights and maids and playing with it maybe a couple of times, then it gets retired to the basement. That doesn't mean I don't fly them. I just have to drag them upstairs, which is a pain. Especially the carbon Z cup. That thing's huge. I mean, it's hard to get through an eight-foot door like that. And, uh, I mean, unless you have a really wide eight foot door, it's still hard. And then we happen to have the chandelier thing hitting. So I have hit that before and I have hit the sides of the door and the stairway doesn't make it easy either. No. Even though we have a walk out, I could just walk out. But anyway, I don't do that. So this plane is a really, really good manageable size. This plane, by the way, is awesome. And I don't know if the 5,000 would fit in here, but I know I was flying this on the four and the 4,000 and the 3,200. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, so far I have like absolutely no complaints on that plane. It's just great, it sounds great, looks great. It's, it's a good storage size. It's gonna be really easy to transport that compared to this 15, uh, 100 millimeters or 1.5 millimeter. It's a big 1.5 plane. meters. Yeah, it's big. Yeah. But the fact that you can take the wingtips off, if you used uh, the wingtips a lot, you could probably get them on and off easier. Um, it would be nice to have a little bit more like definitive locking mechanism, like a twist lock or something so that you know for sure it's locked. But at the same time, it's so easy to forget stuff when you get out to the flying field. So it is nice to just be able to throw it in there. And it's incredible that it's so effective. But either way, the reason I show you that is just to show you that it's, it's totally concealed under this. And then when the kids run by trying to fly their kites or whatever crazy thing they've come up with, <laughs> I don't have to worry about them tripping over it before I can get my videos done. So the other thing I promised you guys was, um, I'm just realizing that we never set the timer back. I told you I was gonna adjust my dual rates and expo. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do is we're going to dual rates and expo and we're gonna go into, you see I'm in the top setting. So there's the middle setting and there's the low setting. And they're all exactly the same right now. Now, as you know, and you may not know this yet because you may not have seen to the very end of the build series, which is at the end of this video, um, we actually moved on the elevator servo, which is on the tail of the aircraft. Um, we moved it, it was supposed to be on the second hole out from the center of the, the servo arm, okay? We moved it out one more for more deflection. Now, that means that we have more pitch control than was otherwise expected from the factory, okay? We also made that thing just straight with the molding. I mean, there was no three degree down. You, I don't think you need that. That's crazy. I about lost the plane because of that. So I just did it straight with the molded line and I did the extra control authority. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna deaden the sticks a little bit in the middle so it's a little bit easier to fly that way. Okay, so I'm gonna leave everything else the same. In fact, rudder, rudder didn't seem to really be a problem. So what I'll probably do is I'll go ahead. I'm, I don't really find I'm going to fly it with no expo anytime. So I'm going to set this to like five. Okay. Then I'm going to set this to 100 and I'm going to set the expo on this to 10. And then on this, I'm going to set this back to like, like 70. No, I actually want the rates high because on rudder, I want to be able to get enough to, to keep it from going in the ditch, for instance, even though that's going to tip the wing 
or it's gonna tip the wing and it's gonna drag the tip. By the way, LEDs, very bright, very good to see, mm -hmm. but very directional, as I was concerned. Yeah. But beautiful. I mean, one of the best looking LED wing tips mm -hmm. we've seen from Horizon. Very directional though. Um, okay, so we're gonna actually set the dual rates to just the regular 100, and then we're just gonna go like kind of crazy on Expo. Okay, we'll go to like 30. So what that means is that if I jank that stick over, it's gonna go. It's gonna give us 100% of the output on that rudder tail wheel, but we're gonna have a lot of soft spot in the middle. Okay, that's what I want. Now, on the rest of the control axis, like on elevator, I'm actually gonna, for my highest setting, I'm gonna dumb this down. Um, we're gonna do like, like 80, and then we're gonna put the Expo up to like 25. Okay, like real, real heavy Expo on it. Okay, then on the regular normal flying mode, I think we'll probably leave it at, we'll go to like 10, okay? And then I'm gonna set this to five because I'm not gonna fly it on nothing, okay? Then I'm gonna switch down to ailerons. I didn't feel like it had any roll issues at all. So, I mean, I might actually leave this at, I'll put this at like three. I'll put this to six, just a little bit more than we had. Eh, that's not enough. I'm gonna put that to 10. You can always move the stick further. That's the key, guys. But some people, like the muscle memory is harder for certain positions, you know, depending on how you hold the control. You see how it's like harder for me to hit this up. This, this is harder for me to reach than it is to reach here because you're just pulling it down. Now the pincer grippers have different issues with that. My issue is that I, when I get real far from my, my mounting position for my hound, it's, it's a little bit harder to control this than it is to control this. I have more finite control. So that's just a personal thing. Now, the other thing is, just so you know, you can actually set the rates different on the bottom of the curve and the top of the curve. And the way you do that is like, if you want the ailerons to be, well, why would you do that with the ailerons? That'd be crazy. So let's just set this all the way and then I'll talk about that for a minute. I'm gonna set this way down for the ailerons because on a landing approach, you're not gonna need a ton of aileron. And then in terms of expo, I'm gonna go up pretty crazy. We'll do like 25, 25. So what's gonna happen is when I get into this, this mode, that could be potentially like, hey, I'm coming in for a landing and I really, I mean, I'm gonna have full, I'm gonna have full flaps and actually I wouldn't mind having a little bit more flaps so I can bring it in even steeper. In the daylight, it's gonna be easier. We're losing light at the end of the flight today, but I wanna go ahead and get this so that I can bring it down and just have really dead sticks for the landing, especially on this axis. Now I still need the maximum output, but I want to be able to make it very manageable and controllable. So now let's go to elevator and talk about what I was talking about, how you can control it either way. So just to review on ailerons, I've got three settings. Okay. On the bottom setting, I'm setting it to, we'll go ahead and do five just for easy figuring. Then we're going to go to 10, which is double. And then we're going to go to 25, which is more than double. Okay. So one setting, then double, then, you know, so we have an exponential change as we go up higher and we're changing the output amount. Okay. So now let's go to elevator. So on elevator, I have zero is five. Um, the regular flying mode is going to be 10 and then it's going to be 25% expo with an 80% output. So I'm going to really dumb that control down. Okay. That's on elevator. Now, why would you want so much less? Because I went one hole out, which means I have more output. Now, some would say, we'll just put it back in and then change your rates higher. Now, I don't want to overdrive the servos because I'll run into different problems. So, um, on the rudder, in the lowest setting, it's gonna be five because we didn't have any big issues there. And then it's gonna be 10 for Expo and then it's still still gonna be 100, but it's gonna go up to 30. In fact, I'm gonna go to 35. I'm just gonna really deaden it. So the other thing is I'm kind of tempted to actually run this, you know, so you have actually more output so that I can make a tighter turn. Like for instance, when I land going downhill toward the road, then I can go out there and I can make a tighter turn. I can do a left turn and then a right turn and then double back without going into the grass. Um, this, this plane would taxi in grass just fine, but I don't want to taxi in the grass like the uh, FedEx guy that came today and delivered the battery, the 5,000 milliamp pack. Uh, thank you, FedEx. It went to Kansas City instead of coming straight over here from Illinois. I don't know why. Two other planes, excuse me, one plane that came, came and then for some reason they shipped the battery to another state for no reason. And then they delivered it and they drove off of the edge of our driveway and made huge ruts. I was not happy. So anyway, um, with that being said, now on elevator, if you wanted to have an expo one direction, but not the other, okay, so obviously this is this mode two, so this is gonna be my elevator for me. All you have to do is you go down to the, uh, the dual rate or the expo, okay? In this case, I'm gonna do expo. You see how the box moves, just like in your other setups? 
So like if I want to have more expo up on the top of the throw and less on the bottom of the throw, you can do that. Sometimes you'll get planes. I mean, obviously you have gravity working against you when you pull up. Now, if you're doing a lot of inverted flight, you want them to be symmetrical. So it's the same on the up and the down. But on a plane like this, I'm not gonna do a ton of inverted flight. So I might actually do a little bit more expo in one direction than the other, okay? I know that sounds complicated and it kind of is. It's also highly subjective. So if you choose not to do it, I don't blame you. But there have been times, especially on the ultra micros, where I don't fly them upside down uh, almost hardly ever. And I might actually change the rates on the down sweep versus the up sweep. So you can also do that with mechanical trim adjustments to get that same kind of feel. But I prefer to do it here because it's much easier. And then you can change it quick on the fly. So in review, we've got three settings. I'm ready to fly. This is going to be my normal flight mode. If I want to do a real high speed pass, this is going to deaden the sticks for me like crazy, but it's going to give me a lot of rudder, especially for like, you know, coming in here and doing some sort of a, you know, like a side uh, demonstration pass. I want to be able to have a little bit more rudder, but I want it to be soft so I can control it and it doesn't jump around with my thumb. Um, also when I get on the ground and I suck that thing to the ground, then I want to be able to get it to turn on me. Okay. That being said, that's what I'm going to run with. I'm going to run it in the middle. And then when I get up in the air, if I find that I don't have enough authority to get it down, I'll just go up here and that's gonna be just like my middle setting from before. So I know for sure I have a safe setting to get it landed. I've got this, which should be a pretty big improvement. And then I've got that, which is gonna be an awesome improvement for the high speed passes where I can just really get it in and get super crisp, low passes. And uh, not feel like I'm gonna over control it. So you guys always ask me, what do you do for Expo and Dual Rates? Well, that's my rationale. That's what I'm thinking. It's like I said, highly subjective. One pilot's gonna say that's great. One pilot's gonna say that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. And I can't believe you would share that. We're all now dumber for having listened to it. Okay, so it just depends on who you ask. All right guys, this Mustang's cool. We're gonna get some more footage. It's gonna be better because it was crazy tonight. And it was even crazier on the move. So in the calm, that thing is gonna be gorgeous and we are not going to take no from an answer from Mother Nature. I totally didn't say that right. We're Definitely. not going to take no for an, for an answer. answer from Mother Nature. There you go. Screw you, Mother Nature. Come with me next.